Hi, this is Victor DiLorenzo of Violent Femmes. When I'm in Downers Grove, Illinois, I just love to listen to yes, WDGC. That's 88.3 on your FM Femme dial. Well, see, they don't really. They're just like doing that because <laughs> for some, it's good promotion for them. They, they've never listened to this station. Nah. Don't think so? <laughs> well, I did when they were in town, but they'll never come back in town again. So. How you doing? Saturday night. Snowing up your room. 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 I get up in the morning and I say blues. I say blues. I say blues. I said blues. I know I am making a mistake, Chris and Dave. However, I'm letting you do the show together again. But I am going to be listening. I am going to listen carefully. And if I hear anything out of the ordinary, I'm going to call. Do you hear me? I don't want any funny stuff. Don't think Fred Moore goes to sleep at 8 o'clock. The neighbors are going to be watching, and if they see your car parked on the grass or in any of the illegal parking zones, they are going to let me know. So do the show, use good judgment, follow format, and remember, no funny stuff. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hi. Can we go to those phone lines? Let's go to those phone lines. Hi, who's this? This is Mike. Mike, where are you calling from, Mike? Oakland. Am I oh. calling number five? You're calling number five, Mike. Oh, my God. You five. win the almighty dollar. <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. Come on, let's hear it. Oh, boy. Hey, can I get some more money? No, 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 no. Wait, we have to hear your enthusiasm. Come on, let's hear it. Oh, I'm enthused right now. I want you to get up on a table, and I want you to scream. Oh, it's inside. Trust me, I'm screaming. Let me ask you, Mike from Oak Brook. Do you have a WDGC DJ card? Yes, I do. And you win an extra penny. No, hey. a dime now. Is it a dime? Yeah. Cost a of living. Dime. Prove hey, that dime. Been up in the world. Nine more cents than David Olmholt. Dollar ten. Prove that you have a DJ card. What's your card number? 707-125. Sounds good to me. Hey, five that's digits. good enough. Hey, can I ask you digits. guys a question? Yeah. What's the picture of the uh, two guys above the card supposed to be? Above the what? Above the uh, card number. Oh, the karate guys? Yeah. Where yeah, it's just... Up? That's just a takeoff on our um, on our takeoff on top forty DJs. <laughs> um, That's all. No big <laughs> deal. You might have like recycled the cards off of something or gotten them secondhand. No, no, we deliberately put them on there for a reason. Live from Downers Grove, the only town in Downers Grove with its own radio station, it's the Chris and Dave Smorgasbord, where you will be entertained as much as you would on an $11 evening out on the town. Here comes Chris. A little late today, Chris. Somebody let him in. Let me in! Let him in! Oh, jeez! WDDC, Downers Grove, 808. In the village and outlying areas. Okay, uh... Pay the band and get him out of here. Oh, how you doing, Dave? Great. <laughs> what time is it? Let's give the time and the weather. It's 8:09 it's, uh, in Downers Grove. The time and the weather. Chris and Dave Smorgasbord, Friday night. We're here, Friday nights. New by time, time slot. Yeah. By the time the intro is over, <laughs> the show is a quarter over too. So uh, eighth over actually. Well, that's that are cool. fractions, right? 
We've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, last time you heard us both together, when we were supposed to be, was the, um, I think, June of 83. It's been, it's been over a year. So, you know, this is how the smorgasbord began. The last year, I was by myself with Jeff Moran. <laughs> uh, we were, were kind of like together, and then Dave was by himself. And we were doing our own separate thing, but now we're back. So, welcome Chris to Chris finally it. has a, a feeling for professionalism. That's right. So we can do a show together. We're back from Canada. We'll be talking about that later. Uh, we don't have any Canada remotes. We'll talk about that, too. We'll talk about that. We have a lot of things to talk about. And we're going to be here until 10 o'clock tonight. And uh, yes, we are sand sandwiched in between two top 40 shows, which we like it better because if we were in between two metal shows, heavy metal, heavy metal, uh, we'd be getting calls all night asking for Judas Priest. Now, we're not, we don't have that, so you know we're not going to be playing top 40, though, either. We're kind of like in between. Well, well, yeah, since we've uh, got back from Canada, we've heard some great, great music from uh, Europe. And not, not the stuff that gets here, because all the stuff that we get here is two years after it's hot back in Canada. That's right. Two, two years. Same with all the latest fashions. Fa fashions and music, yes. All the latest right. music. We get two years after it happens. Oh. So we have to get some European imported music and then play that. You, you want to take that call? <laughs> Okay, well, we'll get the. Let's tell you what. Let's get the show off the ground because it is on the ground right now. Uh, Good. Okay, and then we're going to come back and start the show. Welcome back, Dave. This is the Chris and Dave Smorgasbord. Welcome back. For a Friday night, eight ten. And we're back here in the studio. This is Smork Show Podcast, episode one fifty one, and this is part two of our fortieth anniversary. Get together, uh, Jerome, Jerome Malaskis and Dave Jackson in the studio with me. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. So glad you are with me still after all these years. We um, picked this. We we were picking this up from our last episode, which was yesterday. Yeah. This is sort of a double episode this weekend. We are releasing, and actually, this episode is airing on 9 11 2022, which is exactly 40 years ago. From when we launched the Chris and Dave Smorgasbord radio show on WDGC FM, Downers Grove. And so, if you are listening to this episode first, you may want to start over from last episode, which will give you the true rep retrospective of the show. So, well, anyway. I, I think it's interesting that your show started on September the 11th. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that weird? 9-11. <laughs> 11 Yeah. 82. And I like the artwork we have for our show. It really encapsulates um, pretty much everything, everybody who has been a contributor to the show. And um, I'm just really proud of our legacy, really. <clears throat> so in episode one, um, we talked about really our formative years and our first season as the Chris and Dave Smorgasbord. But then we sort of split. And I don't know exactly what led to the split and why we decided to kind of go our separate ways for at least a year. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll start there. Dave, do you remember anything about why we decided to take on a hiatus? Not, um, not particularly. I remember I had some other things I wanted to explore. Um, I did a, a show called open mind, which explored some different topics. So I, I wanted to, and plus, I was reading some books at that time about experimental underground radio, FM radio from the 60s. And, you know, I just wanted to try some things because, hey, we still could. Back then, yeah. You know, it was it was high school radio, and I wanted to just try out some ideas. And I did that for a while. It was okay. I was a fan of the Open Mind show. I listened. Me too. Sunday night, right? But yeah. that kind of ran its course, and uh, then eventually we found our way back to what I think we did best. I um, I really think that there was actually a lot of good material that came out in this in-between season because there was... So I paired, paired up with somebody named Jeff Moran. And Jeff was... Um, he was fine. He went along with the, the, the format, but he didn't give me the right sounding board that I needed like that you and I had, because we had this chemistry of this in of this back and forth. Sure. And Jeff was, he, he went along with it. 
And nothing, nothing against Jeff. I mean, it just wasn't his thing. And uh, but he let me do kind of run the show, and he was just there to bounce things off. But he didn't really, I guess, contribute the way I would want, and um, and certainly not on the level that you and I have, Dave. Um, no, but, I remember. I, I used to hear some of those um, those shows. Right. Uh-huh. Seemed so like time, there were times when Jeff just didn't quite know how to respond, or you were trying to pull something out of him, and. Maybe he wasn't quite sure what you wanted out of him. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think I know what he wanted out of you. Play more Queen. Yeah, he was a big Queen fan, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I've got no regrets. I mean, it was a good pairing, but, I mean, not a good pairing, but it, was, it worked because I was able to still do what I wanted to do and had a partner there that allowed me to do it without any kind of interference. But um, during that time, you and I had some crossover. You had your open mind show. I had the Smorgasbord show, which I had rebranded to Smorgasbord Saturday night. Um, and then every now and then you would show up on my show. And there were a couple of times that I showed up on your show. So we did, we had a connection for that year. And so I've got some bits here that I think um, will show a little bit of that before we got back together again in um, 84. So let's, um, let me kick this off. This was our, our little jingle here of the Smorgasbord Saturday Night Show. Today is Saturday, and Saturday is unique. It enjoys being different, so to speak. There's not another day quite like Saturday in the week. I have got a job application. Okay, I work at Disc Jockey Records in Bolingbrook. And this lady is a, is a shopping cart lady. She goes into Kmart. See, I work in a mall, the Kmart in Bolingbrook. She goes into Kmart each Sunday. Her daughter drops her off at the mall. She stays at the mall every, all, all day on Saturday, Sunday. She goes to Kmart. She fills up seven or eight baskets full of merchandise and leaves them there and she walks out <laughs> now can you imagine a stock boy i mean i hate it when somebody leaves albums in the wrong place i can imagine a stock boy going to see seeing these shopping carts every week filled with things from all over the store going back and putting everything back so this lady's pretty uh way out there and she she talked like this you heard i go what are you heard are you hiring Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, we are hiring. We're not really, but I, I, I gave a job application to her just to see what kind of answer she'd put. Okay, now I showed Jeff the handwriting, which I can't explain over the air. Just looks like she wrote with her left toe. I mean it. Okay, her name is her name is Judith M. Quack. Are we allowed? To, are we allowed to say? <laughs> I was just about to say that. Maybe you shouldn't give out the name. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> I won't tell where she lives or anything. Okay. It says date. February. Okay. First of all, it's March. <laughs> Second of all, there's no, there's no date or year. Date. February. She has her social security number down and all that. Phone number. No, it says. No big deal. Are you 18 years or older? No answer. Yes or no? No answer. Then there's this big separate box that says special questions. Do not answer any of these questions in the framed area unless the employer has checked a box preceding a question, thereby indicating the information is required for, you know, this is for discrimination, just in case they need it for some kind of job, like um, foreign relations or something. They'll ask you what kind of language you speak fluent. But you don't have to answer unless it's been checked. So she doesn't see any checks. We didn't check any boxes. So she checked them all, and she answered them all. <laughs> she checks his height. Five and a half feet, 11 and a half inches. Weight, 150. That's not true. She had to be at least 250. What foreign languages do you speak fluently? English. <laughs> what foreign languages? English. Citizen of the U.S.? Yes. Date of birth? August 1919-3. Now, it's not 1903, it's 19193. Okay, even if it was August 19th, there's only three numbers for the year, 19 and 3, so that can't be it. 1930. No, it doesn't say 30. 
Doesn't write down zeros. No. And if you were to say it was August 1st, there's no such year as 91, 93 yet. So if something is messed up there, I can't figure out that at all. Okay. Employ employment desired. Radio retail store. We're a record store, first of all. We have nothing to do with radios and retail store. Okay, that's what she's trying to do. Retail, spelled R-E-A-E-T-A-R-L. <laughs> Got the right letters. Dates you can start, 5 to 9 p.m. <laughs> that's the time she'd be working, not the date. Salary desired, 350 no decimal points, so I guess she wants $350. Are you employed now? She doesn't answer that. She doesn't answer, have you ever been applied to this, applied to this company before, where or when? She doesn't do that. Okay, grammar school. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even read that. Numbers, here's another one of these. Number of years attended. 191951. Okay, I could see the year 1951, but that has nothing to do with number of years attended. Usually you put four years at this high school. She put a high school in the grammar school part. She doesn't put anything for high school, college, or graduate school. Did you graduate? 27 and a half. <laughs> I don't know where that's supposed to come from. Subject studied history. History school, does it say? It's, it's spelled S-C-H-R-O-O-D. Aberda instead of algebra in English. Okay, and here's down in another section called general. Subject of special study or research work. Thought. Just thought. She was in the Army, and she was a major, spelled M-O-Z-A-R. Former employers. She worked for um, some cookie company. It got $1.50 an hour. Reason for leaving. Leg off. <laughs> L-E-G off. <laughs> I, could th I could see layoff or something, but this says leg off. <laughs> References. Give the names of three persons not related to you whom you've known at least one year. She puts herself down. Jam quack. Address. And that's it. In case of emergency, notify. Carol. She doesn't put an address or phone number. In case of emergency, notify. You're supposed to go, Carol! Emergency! I don't know what you're supposed to do. Okay, so then it says, I certify that the facts contained in this application, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. You're supposed to sign your name. She doesn't even sign her name by signature. It says date. March. It's March now. But it was February about, you know, five minutes ago. March. She doesn't put a date or year. Just date. March. And then it says, do not write below this line. Date. March. <laughs> Hired. Yes or no? She checks yes. <laughs> this is for the employer. Okay, so I'm saving this. <laughs> so those are the kind of people that go into Bolingbroke. Okay, yeah. I, I, I remember that. That was fun. She was... Uh, she was weird. She used to come in like every day at the record store and then she applied for a job. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I, of course I knew that the application would have come in for good material. So I took that to the show. Um, I meant, I meant to mention that the show that Jeff and I had was moved to Saturday night, 10 to midnight. And that was pretty cool because it brought in some really strange callers. Hmm. 10 to midnight episode um, <clears throat> time slot. And we actually pushed the limits to when we would sign off. We would sign off like 12, 15, 12, 30, even as late as one o'clock in the morning, we'd still be going. Fred, of course, Fred Moore was still asleep, so he didn't know. But um, right about this time, I also became the station's public relations director, which, um, I really didn't take seriously except for promoting my own show. <laughs> so I gave away albums to boost our audience. And here's um, a little bit about our album giveaway. I'm actually trying to figure out how I actually funded this because I worked in a record store and I guess I gave away some promo albums mm -hmm. to right. some people. But I don't know how I was able to fund some of these requests because I would ask them what album they wanted and they would say like, you know, police synchronicity. I'm like, okay, cool. And I used to send albums out to them. So I have no idea what I did. Maybe I spent my allowance because <laughs> the radio station didn't pay for it. Well, let's see if we can figure this out. I want to do a giveaway. It's good promotion for us. Good promotion for the station. 
So remember, first three callers get cow dung and chicken tongue EPs. Uh, and, and Wait a minute. So here, <laughs> so I'm giving away my own album. So cow, cow dung and chicken tongue was our album of comp. Uh, it was a compilation of um, songs that we did. And so I guess that was part of the uh, giveaway. Nobody had requested that one though. No. I want to do a giveaway. It's good promotion for us, good promotion for the station. So remember, first three callers get cow dung and chicken tongue EPs. Uh, and, and everybody in the top 10 gets on the mailing list. And the 10th caller gets their choice of the top 10 albums. Also, added John Cougar, a uh whole -huh. <laughs> uh. ELO Time, and Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. Okay? So you got a ch choice of 13 albums there. So 8520404, when we start this next song here, uh, we'll do this. Hey, hello? Hi. Who's this? Aaron. Aaron. We know you. You know yeah. me, yeah. Well, you're already on our mailing list. Yeah, but the... You're Dave's list. friend, right? Yeah. She's the winner? Well... She's 10th caller, isn't she? Yeah? Okay. Well, see, I was hoping we'd give it to somebody that we didn't know. Well, you know Dave. You can get a discount from him, so it's almost free for you anyway. I don't even... I don't know him that well. Okay. You want an album? What? You want? I want an album. Do you? Sure. <laughs> it's a stupid wouldn't. question. Okay. We'll do it. All right, Chris will, Chris will name it. Because it is fair, album. because we can't, you know, say, oh, we know you. I found out that that's illegal. If, just because we know the person does not... Uh, Disqualify them from. See, I don't even know. I just know her because she knows Dave. But uh, okay, you have a choice. Can we go through the choices again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just the top ten. He oh yeah, we also had John Cougar in there too. Forgot to mention that. Okay, John Cougar. Uh huh. <laughs> Faster than the speed of night. Bonnie Tyler. Pyromania. Def Leppard. Eliminator. ZZ Top. Thriller by Michael Jackson. Greatest hits by Air Supply. Eyes that see in the dark. Kenny Rogers. Synchronicity. The Police. Genesis. Metal Health, Quiet Riot, Can't Slow Down, Lionel Richie, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, and Time by ELO. What is it? Please. Synchronicity. Okay. All right. Uh, put it on hold and we'll get your address in a little while. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm proud of myself. We got a whole bunch of people for the main list. Uh, let's talk about this now. Um, so now we know that there are a lot of people who actually listen to us. Yes, and our age group is between 11 and 18, we found out. The average age of 16, which is good. That's what we want to aim for. Because I remember we were at Castaldo, we were at Castaldo Park back in May, and we had a bunch of 10-year-olds there, and eight-year-olds, giving us the dirty finger. We were supposed to air this on CATV. It's cable. Educational television. They wanted us to air that. Sure. But anyway, uh, congratulations to the following: Linda Smith of Naperville, Mary Huff of Downers Grove, Mark. I don't know. I hate, I hate reading names because uh, I can't pronounce them. R-E-N-K-E-S, Renkis, Downers Grove, uh, Carla Scarpolino of Woodridge, Bill Jones of Downers Grove, Eugene Chang of Woodridge, Denise LaCroix of Rhode Island. That's not a town. That's the state of Ro Rhode Island. Uh, I can't even pronounce. The girl that just called back that wanted to win, but she couldn't because uh, she already won. Judy. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Jeff, you you pronounce it wrong. That way, I don't get in trouble. Go ahead. What is it? It's the 13 letter last name or whatever. <laughs> Judy Matzerba. That sounds like a Jewish soup. Matzo ball soup. Ever hear? You ever have matzo ball? That name sounds awfully familiar, though. I think that's it. Girl who called first. And she's from Downers yeah, Grove. And congratulations to uh, what's her name? Put up the amplifier again. Aaron. Aaron, what's her last that's name? Her last name. <laughs> okay. I feel like doing this one more time giving away another album? Yes. I'm on a roll. Which caller should we make it this time? We'll make it the first caller. That easy. First. Hey, we've got funds for the show now because uh, we can afford the stamps now. The school's going to pay for the stamps, I assume. So uh, this is good publicity for the station, so I say, hey, let's give away an album. All right. This is uh, The, the Who. Who. From Face Dances, Another Tricky Day. And on 88.3 WDDC... Where uh, we're giving away another album. First caller, 8520404. <laughs> how did we give the albums away? I, I still don't remember how I did that. Oh, well, I guess we know who was paying for the stamps. <laughs> By the the stamps is the least a part of the yeah. problem. Actually, I know who the Aaron in that. Uh, Do you? Bit. Yeah. Uh, remember a girl named Aaron Drennan? Yes. 
Yeah, I believe that's probably her. That name sounds very familiar. And she knew Dave. And as I remember, I think she had a little bit of a crush on you. Yeah? Yeah. Do you remember mm. an Aaron? No. 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 <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why she was so ticked. <laughs> Memories tend to block things out that are... Yeah, she, you actually... Mm. Uh, I don't know. If she was there. I don't know if you were at my uh, at my house. Uh, probably not around around about that time. And she was, she was there. I just remember that. And I remember talking to her a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just remember Aaron Drennan. We had a lot of girls calling into the shows back then. In fact, there was this one girl, I remember her name was Linda. And well, the, the Matzer Ba? Ma, oh, yeah. The, the, the Mother's Ba. Yeah, mother's ba. Well, the, the well, Devo no, well, guy. The, the Devo guy. Ma, ma, yeah, then, the, because they were big yes. Devo fans. Yes. There was this, yeah, there were like these two girls, which by the way, Judy and Mary Huff. Yeah. I dated Judy, I believe. We had, <laughs> had a date. Yeah, you did. And uh, that's coming up later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a bit foreshadowing. She's still, I mean, they're still like, they're connected to me on Facebook, mm-hmm. those two. And they like to hang around cemeteries. Well, they had a bit of, well, I they, know Judy they, definitely had a bit of a goth vibe about her. She still does. They have uh, pictures of like cemeteries on her Facebook page. Well, you know. But Mother's Bot, they used to call up under different names Mm -hmm. and we would add these like multiple people on our mailing list and it ended up being the same person mary judy and they would call up on our talent line or whatever and they would have these different names but mother's ba was the devo last name which by the way produced the rugrat music oh okay okay so that would probably have been like the lead we'd have been like the lead singers like you know uh probably did the song Good. Da, 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 yeah, da, we're good. Guy, yeah. Right. yeah, I remember seeing that name Mother's Ba in like Devo episodes when, uh, not Devo, uh, Rugrats episodes when Allie was, you know, a baby, well, it, an yeah. infant, and she would be watching those shows and say, Mother's Ba, that's Judy Huff. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that Mother's Ba guy would probably not make that connection. But, yeah. Yeah. but uh, it's interesting you said, yeah, is it Jewish? It sounds like matzo ball. Matzo ball soup. Matzo, matzo ball. I got to tell you, I used to have a nice, uh, had a matzo ball soup. It was wonderful. Definitely. Yeah. So um, just a little continuing here of uh, Chris and Jeff taking some phone calls. Let's see what this, uh, what this produces. Last week for that. So let's go to those phone lines, 852-0404. If you're out there, we want to talk to you. Tell us what's going on tonight. We've got, uh, we're going to be here until 12 o'clock. Hi, do you here? Hi. How are you? Good. How about you? Do you remember us from last weekend, you know, on New Year's Eve, when we called in and we signed off for you? Oh, that's right. You did a very nice job at that, yeah, too. Yeah, we, we want to sign off for you guys again. All right. You call back around 1215. Uh, okay. Can we? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you remember our names? Um, there were, there were three of you, right? Yep. Yeah, and we sang some songs and stuff. Yeah, I know. There were so many names last week, I forgot. What, what, what were they again? So we can... Um, Claudia, Shannon, and Chris. That's right. I knew that's that. That's right. Okay, good. Okay, we'll be signing off for you this week. You guys are really going to make it in the business. We I, are. All right. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, we'll call back. Wait, would you play some songs for us? Yeah, sure. Oh, you don't have anything that we like to play right now. What type of music? Um, punk. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. They okay, left well, at 10. Well, that's okay. <laughs> play anything and dedicate it to us. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, they, they love us. <laughs> Claudia, Chris, and Shannon. And notice I told them to call it back at 12.15 to sign us off. We're supposed to sign off at midnight, and we just push the limits, and we would just go till 12.15, right, 12.30, right. whatever time we wanted to sign off. Violation of something. <laughs> I never got a fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. You're trying to be funny. Don't be funny. Don't be funny because you're not. You're not funny. Qu- quit with the funny stuff. Now, here's something that I don't think you guys remember, but do you remember when we tried to take this show on TV? Mm. We, um, so the radio station was separated between the, the actual radio station and the classroom. And the classroom also doubled as a TV production studio. So we decided to break in (laughs) to the, um, the classroom for a couple of weeks and actually tried to do our show on TV. <laughs> it was not a good idea because we're trying to 
we're trying to do something for TV, but then the radio audience suffered because they have no idea what we're doing. And then, so it, it was, it was a very difficult balance to try to get both mediums to work. So, um, it only lasted two weeks and this video, the video never surfaced anywhere. I tried to get it years later, if I remember correctly. Uh, but somebody had recorded over it with some, I don't know. I think it was some sort of a Downers Grove, uh, heritage fest, uh, show where some guy in a chicken costume was like interviewing people and they recorded over our original video. So the videos don't exist anymore, but we did have videos of our show that were intended to be aired on some CATV show. And I, I can't even tell you 100% whether it ever made it on TV, but the intention was there. So we, here's a, here's a couple of clips. Here's one showing us that we had some people. So Pete was back in the studio at this time with Jeff and they were out in the TV station part of the, of the, of the studio. And I was kicking off the show and here's a sample of that. Oh, WDDC, Downers Grove. How you doing, everybody? Let me just get situated here. Ah. Yes, we are in the studio of uh, WDDC in Downers Grove, and we are ready to go for television once again. And uh, we've got it a lot better this week because audio is going to sound a lot better. Last week, heard a lot of room reverberation and all that. Well, this week, we've got it together. And we're going to switch out to the TV station where Jeff Brand and Pete McCain are sitting. Hi, are you out there? Yeah, we're out here, man. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you sound good. That's good. You sound a lot better than you did last week. That's great. Well, you know, uh, after that operation, you know, it got better. <laughs> well, I'm going to be out there in a couple minutes, all right? So yeah, you just stay cool. Yeah, what are you doing over there? Well, just taking calls, playing the tunes, you know. In the dark. Yeah, really. I mean, like... You're all over there, and we're over here, and we can't even see it. It's not like well, being in the announcer's well, booth. I'll be out there in a couple minutes. Let me explain the problem to the audience. Okay, why don't you explain the problems to the audience, then? We're not getting audio on the uh, video recorder, and that's the whole thing with TV. You need audio. That's why they call it television. The vision is the seeing part. The tele is the listening part. I didn't understand that, Chris. <laughs> so that's what we have to do, and as soon as we get that together, we'll be back with you. Why don't we play the Alan Parsons Project? Yeah, which one did you pick out here, Jeff? I wouldn't want to be like you. <laughs> from their first you, album. You made a good choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, WDDC. So we tried to balance this show between audio and, and video, and it was it, it just didn't work because people listening on the radio just couldn't figure out what we were doing, and it was it was difficult to do both. Um, but uh, it was fun. Chris, I have a question. Yeah. Why was Pete sucking on helium when he was doing? That? <laughs> what a voice! His voice is like three octaves higher than it is now, huh? I met him back in the day. I mean, back then, I don't remember his voice being that high. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. It was girls with lower voices back then. Maybe the cassette wasn't playing back at the right speed. Yeah. Maybe that's true. Yeah, the cassette tapes are, you know, they're degrading. 40 years. I mean, the fact that they're still producing anything now is amazing. Oh, that's why people want to bring back cassettes. One of the things that I remember from that show is that we tried to do, um, so I had a character. Do you remember Judy the Child? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. It was like, that <laughs> it was a bravo, bravo, bravo. Remember Judy? So we had this cooking episode, this cooking thing. Where, oh shitty! Oh shitty! Oh shitty! Um. So, yeah, Dave and I did something. Um, where? Hold on a second. Where is uh? That's like Chris and Dave. Let me see here. Do I have something here? Just, just, just real quick here. I, I don't want to play this whole thing, but this is like. <laughs> It was like our Judy Judy Child. <laughs> Judy, wait, what's her name? Judy the Child. No, like her real name. Um, oh, Julie. Uh, Julia Ju Child. Julia <laughs> yeah, I can't remember her name. Um, well, we just had like this so cooking thing. Yes, I feel strange because, see, the reason I took this course Judy, is because I'm sick of coming home, you know, from school and whatever, and all I can make myself is a peanut butter sandwich, you know, so I think this series will help me. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen was just out of control. So we tried to do this on live on TV. So Pete gets dressed up in, like, drag. <laughs> 
and he hops why, why into not? the why studio not? and he tries to do this Judy character and uh, here it is. <laughs> Have a seat, Judy. You want to, would you like, can I take oh, a coat? Oh, Jeff, will you hold on to my coat? Thank you! Thanks, Judy. Hello! Oh. Have a seat. You want a seat? Oh, uh, yes, I would like a seat. Oh. Oh. Chris, you've got to watch your hands. Your hand. Oh. Christopher, I, um, uh, I brought you, I brought you some food this time because last time I did not bring any food and we did not do very well. Because we didn't have any fun, we only had spices and things like that. I, uh, I brought you something today, and what we're... Chris, would you like to know what we're going to make today? What are we going to make? Well, Chris... Whoopi? No, Chris! Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> uh, we're going to make some pickle sandwiches. Yes, we are. Pickle sandwiches? Yes, pickle like, sandwiches! Judy, Judy, I tried making this the other day. Yeah. it totally fell apart. I couldn't do it. you got to show me your secret. That is wild! bread that you uh, brought us? Sure. I oh. do not care. This is nice. You brought us the heels. <laughs> well, Christopher, last time I did not bring you any food. So this time, be lucky for what you got, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine say anybody, anybody tuning into the radio station at this time when this is going on? Well... Let's see how exactly how many groups have we offended since uh, <laughs> we've been on today? <laughs> today, <laughs> just this episode alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> imagine forty years of offending. Well, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a wonderfully long track record, but yeah. <laughs> but but the thing is, back forty years ago, this would just been silly, not offensive. Yeah. Well, actually. I mean, to your point, what, what was offensive about that? Like, who were, who would be offending by that? I don't. It would I don't know that was pretty n- neutral. Uh, maybe hysterical women would find that very offensive. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah, I mean, Pete really dre- uh, dressed up in drag. Uh, it was pretty scary. I wish. I really wish I had that video today. Um, but like I said, when I went back to the archives, uh, it had been recorded over, so it'll never be seen. A travesty. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, it was fun. I mean, it, we were trying to branch into something new that we never did before. And, uh, for whatever it's worth, that's, uh, for the record. And let's see one more thing here from the, uh, uh, from that period of time, we used to do something called talent line. This is when the talent line would, was born. We would just take phone calls and we would just have people whether perform or tell a joke or, or something. This one, when I was going through the archives stood out as something that I thought I would play here now. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead with your, uh, talent. It's like a skit. Okay. 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 This is the, Hello, Rail Ann. This is a story about Red Riding Hood. Setting, the deep woods. Time, the 20th century. And now we go to Miss Riding Hood on our way to her sick grandmother's house in her sick bed way away in the deep forest. It's a <laughs> Gee, it's getting dark out. Now Miss Riding Hood enters her grandmother's house unsuspectingly. Grandma, how are you feeling? Poor old lady. Pretty good. How about yourself, little girly? Grandma, it's your voice. It's changing. You're going through puberty. Well, I got a new cold. One that won't quit. Make me feel sick, sick, sick. Grandma, look. I brought some cookies. You don't bring me cookies anymore. Grandma, that's not you. It's Chris Bartage. Live <laughs> from Donna's Grove, it's Saturday night and almost Sunday morning. The end. Almost oh, as good as Dickie great. Goodman. All right. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. I like that one. That was very good. We liked it. That was good. I uh, I can dig it. It's kind of like a Mr. Jaws thing. <laughs> you remember that one? Yeah. 
unfortunately. Well, yeah, thanks. Dickie Goodman. Thanks for your call. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you were inspiring other talent. I guess I was. So, so unfortunately, I didn't have anything going on with, uh, I don't have any open mind shows, although. I will be showing, I will be playing a couple of open mind bits here in just a second. But before the, I get into that, let's talk mm -hmm. about the next um, sort of the theme that we talk about, and that's the dateline concept. So I thought it would be good to somehow do dateline. And the reason why I think, well, here's the bit that really inspired, inspired that concept. Um, when I was, uh, so the girl that had given us the bell that I was dating for a couple of years, she came on and did a show with me, uh, and one of her best friends, <clears throat> she came, the, the two of them came on and I just said, you know what, why don't you two girls just do the show? You know, Chris and Chris and Jeff at the time really didn't have anything going. And I'm like, all right, this might spice up the show a little bit. So I had, um, Audrey and her friend, I don't remember her name, Deanna, D something like that. Sounds familiar. The two of them did the show. And of course, man, <laughs> talk about phone calls coming out of the woodworks. They had such a huge like, number of calls coming in. You can imagine. But you're kind of jealous. <laughs> well, I just let them go. I just thought it was kind of cool. So they were flirting with guys on the phone on the, on the, on the show. Well, my dad called. <laughs> and this really got me into trouble. Well, there was that guy, Marty Udicious. Yeah. We used to call him Marty Udicious to the dishes. Yeah. He's like, Mr. Moore, they're doing pornography. <laughs> <laughs> like pornography. That's like visual, right? You can't do that on the radio. Yeah. He kind of became like the Wayne Leela, played the Wayne Leela role. Yeah. yeah. I didn't need this. Listening like, for, and then complaining. Mr. Uh, Moore, they're doing this. Mr. Moore, <laughs> they said this. It's interesting how you do his voice. Mr. Sounding like, constipated. Like a potato chip up his ass. Oh, I got more like a full <laughs> log up there. <laughs> Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore is like, I don't care. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Anyway, my dad calls up and flirts with these girls. They're like 16, 17 at the time. <clears throat> I played this back on uh, my dad's, when my dad passed away uh, 2019. And I did a, a eulogy for him. I did an episode around my dad. I played all the bits that my dad contributed to the show, <clears throat> mainly through the um, the radio plays that we did. He was um, a couple of narration uh, bits, <clears throat> but one of the episodes he called into the show and he did this, and I thought this was this is classic. And uh, I'll play this, and uh, we'll come back and react. So WDDC, sixteen minutes after eleven o'clock, and uh, we've got we've been taking several calls during that song and we've got another person that's interested in talent line uh, not talent line a date line I'm sorry and uh, we're going to go to those phone lines and um, I don't know <laughs> let's let's do it hello hello you're on the air hello 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 yes oh you're there uh huh ah I've been listening to your date line and I'm very very interested in uh, one of the girls that's at the studio which girl are you interested in Shelly Shelly yeah. <laughs> uh, let's let's hear a little bit about you first. We need a description. A description. Yeah. Um, how well, tall are you, and what? Um, how okay, you I'm six foot tall. I mm -hmm. weigh 185 pounds. Ooh. Sound like a real man. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I like to think so. <laughs> I uh, work out a lot. I'm a 42, 33. <laughs> 16 inch biceps. <laughs> No more. No more. <laughs> what color eyes? Green. Green. Actually, they're blue in the right light. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry? Is it like a whole prism thing? <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on the mood I'm in. I mean, if I'm in a real romantic Like mood. a mood ring? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, what color hair? Uh, dark brown. Dark brown? <clears throat> Just How old are you? <laughs> uh, well, that may be a problem. <laughs> I'm a little old. How old is Actually, Shelly? Likes I, older men. Chronologically, I'm old, but in my mind, I'm still a youngster. Jailbait. I'm 43. <laughs> <laughs> jailbait. <laughs> oh, it's only jailbait if you get caught. You could be her father, you know. Uh, well, that's possible. We could talk about that. 
Yeah. I don't, is, is Shelly there? Yeah. Yeah. Shelly. Yeah, is she going to talk to me at all? or? Yeah, I'll talk to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shelly, I love your voice. Thanks. <laughs> you don't have a bad one either. <laughs> really, you sound terrific. I bet you're a lot of fun. Thanks. Do you think you could be interested in an older man, at least for a night? <laughs> we'll have to talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Pardon me? I said it's possible. That it's possible. Well, uh-huh. at least there's a, there's hope there. Yeah. Well, what kind of a guy do you like? Um, he's got to be romantic mm-hmm. and a lot of fun. And I mean, all the flowers and that whole shtick are... Yeah. Uh, rich. Rich. I have a lot of money. Uh, how about a lot of debt? Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Is that qualified? That's rich potential. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. I have a promoter there. That's right. <laughs> no commission for you. <laughs> so, I, aren't you supposed to ask me questions or something? Are uh, you cute? Well, uh, I think uh, I'm average looking. <laughs> Some women think I'm cute. Uh huh. I think it depends on the mood they're in. <laughs> do you have any kids? No, no kids, but I do have a teenage son. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you consider yourself a kid? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, uh, well, then, if you're a kid, he's a kid. Okay. How old are you? Uh, 17. 17. You've ever had an experience with an older man? My dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that kind of an experience. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, have you ever had a fantasy about an older man? Uh-huh, yeah, lots of them. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, can you tell me about it? Not over the phone, not here. <laughs> One of us is going to be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, how could we go about meeting? Uh, well, she's here at the station. Where, where are you calling from? Uh, well, I'm calling from home right now. I have a nice fire going in my bedroom. Ugh. The water bed is, is it, warm. Is it a fireplace or is it just a fire? <laughs> Very good. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's in the fireplace. Oh, okay. That's good. Well, I heard somebody back in the background there laughing. Oh, uh, it's just is a that- friend of mine. Oh, you've got somebody there now, huh? Yes, I have someone for Audrey. Oh, for Audrey. <laughs> so what does he look like? Well, he's he's cool. He's tall. Uh-huh. He's, uh, That's it? He's uh, fairly handsome, uh, if you look at him the right way. <laughs> <laughs> With he has sandy boy. brown hair. Uh-huh. He's about six foot tall. He's a little trimmer than I am. Of course, he's a little younger. Mm-hmm. And, How old uh, is he? He is 20. Oh. oh. Well, you're more interested in this. <laughs> I'm hurt. We're interested in you. Oh, okay. Well, so listen, so what's the next thing then? I heard, I've i only heard part of this dateline, and I don't understand how you get together after you decide you're interested. Well, we'll get your address later and, okay. and phone number, and we'll call you. Sounds good. Oh, I've heard that one. Don't call me. I'll call you. <laughs> oh, no. Don't forget, I'm old enough to know this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of giggling going on over there. <laughs> so, this is it, right? Apparently you're really causing a stir here. <laughs> oh, in the station. who's this, Jeff? Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm causing a stir. Well, there's a lot of people coming here now. All of a sudden. <laughs> as long as they don't have badges. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not. Uh, we're not on past twelve yet, so the police oh. won't be here yet. Oh, you have to sign off soon, don't you? No, we still got plenty. Of time. Okay. Well, I guess we've carried this far enough, haven't we? Okay. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in pursuing this if there's a way to do this. Okay, we'll get together sometime. Hello? Oh, here's my friend. Hey, what, are you trying to pick up teenage girls again? (laughs) He's always trying to pick up teenage girls. What's the deal here? (laughs) How many times have I told you not to get on the phone when I'm on the phone? I'm sorry. Is there, like, a... I bet there's, like, some teenage girl on the other end of the line, right? Uh, yes. (sighs) I swear to this guy... All he ever does. I mean, you should have seen the 13-year-old yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Stay away from him. Okay, we got to go. Well, okay. I guess we'll we'll put you on hold and talk to you while we play this song. Okay. All right, thanks for calling. Sure. Hold on. DVC, down to the scroll, 24 minutes after 11 o'clock. And uh, we'll be here till 12. We won't be here till 12.30. Yeah, we're going to sign off a little early. Okay, bye-bye. So, yeah. You could hear the people at the end starting to show up. There were some people from the staff driving around the station listening to that as it was airing. Oh. And they came in. They're like, what are you doing? It was Marty Adicious. It was Daryl Waltman. It was like two other people on staff. I'm like, 
you guys got to stop this. I, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was just my dad going loose. Loose cannon. Oh, my gosh. That was funny to listen to now. Did they call Fred and try to turn you in? <laughs> uh, yeah. Marty Udishes went to, to uh, Fred Moore on so, Monday morning. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. He reported me on that one. And I don't remember. There was no fallout from that. Uh, I think he just didn't want anything to do with us. <laughs> He's like, okay, whatever. So we're live here at the uh, Tivoli Bowling Alley here in Downers Grove. While we were playing that last bit, we decided to take the equipment and we went over to the bowling alley. Remember this one? So we did a lot of um, remote broadcasts over the years. We did one at Castaldo Park. It was just me and Pete. And that's where uh, nobody showed up except for about four six-year-olds giving us the finger. <clears throat> and that made for very interesting television. That actually aired on CATV. There was a, uh, a one-hour show of the Costello Park show. I don't know if who, whoever watched it. It was cable TV. Um, but then we thought we would take the uh, show to the Tivoli bowling alley. And I would say that was our most successful remote. because Not because our audience had shown up, but just because we had an installed audience there. There were just people that's hanging out there on a Friday, on a Saturday night or whatever it was, and they were just in this room. And so I set up our equipment there in this little, I rented the, the side room for us. We set up our stuff. And I said, I was, I was scared for my life. This, this, these people, they were these bikers, these really tough dudes, these burnouts. Mm -hmm. And they all took the, they all took their chairs, and we had a full room of people, and they were they were wanting to be entertained. And I never felt as much pressure up until that point to actually feel like I needed to entertain people than I did then. Do you remember this? I mean, you both were there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. But in the end, I thought it was one of our best remote broadcasts because we used them as our material, really. We let them take over. We let them do the show. Yeah, definitely. I said, you know, these might not be our audience, but they're here. Let's, let's have fun with them. They might have something to contribute. So we let them come up on stage, take the microphone. And so um, here's one clip from that show uh, where I just had... This guy came up and took the microphone from us. Well, I'm coming home from Yorktown, you see, and our car's a stick shift, and I don't, stick shift drive me nuts. And I don't put enough gas in when I pull up the clutch. The car goes dead there at like a turn lane up by that one real busy one by the highway and everything. And boy, I couldn't get it started for 15 minutes and all these people are passing me. So I get out to push it onto the middle meridian. It's old man cuts me off was about ready to kill him and finally one cool guy saw that i had an expensive car and helped me get it to the side and then finally it started but now the whole electrical system is screwed up and it's being repaired because the battery's being drained constantly by some mysterious noise that the car is making i think this is an omen from god <laughs> about the evils in our world I think if you read Luke, if you read Luke in the Bible, it will fully explain itself. It said Jesus will come on if come on down. That's what you know. Jesus is supposed to be a car when he's re-resurrected next time. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? Yes. Good. Thank you. I have to spread the word of the Lord. <laughs> uh. Come on down. Come on down. This price is right. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. It's the Lord. Come on down. And, um, well, one more thing from this, from this little show. This is my world famous folk song. It's called Folk Music. It's better than me already. Fuck music, fuck music, fuck music, fuck music. I like John Lennon. I am happy. I 
draw my head long. I live at Woodstock. Fuck music. Fuck music. Fuck music. Yeah. <laughs> A classic. Oh, a classic. Yeah. So I thought it was a fun show. That did air on CATV once. We had a uh, Costello Park, I'm sorry, uh, a Tivoli Bowling Alley live remote uh, aired. I don't know how we managed to get that aired, but we did. And um, I guess we could stop the bowling alley. We're out of the bowling alley now. And one of our last live episodes we did was from... The barn. And the barn was, I think I was a little too cocky coming off the heels of the success of the the Tivoli Bowling Alley show that I thought, let's get a big um, a venue to do our show and let's give away tickets and let's fill this place up and let's just do a full show. So I had spent, um, I guess, a couple of months promoting this thing and giving away tickets and I actually had a full full. I, a full venue, a full um, uh, attendee list. We had 150 tickets we had given away in a matter of you know a couple months, people signing up for this thing. We thought, man, this is going to be great. So we had, um, we had TV cameras. We had, um, I don't remember anymore what we had there. But we spent a good, I don't know, $100 renting out this place, which was a lot of money back then. Pete had bought 25 large pizzas. <laughs> and I think I took home about 20. <laughs> yeah. 20 of those. Oh, we were eating that stuff for like five yeah. months for, it was in the frozen, it was in the freezer because nobody showed up because it, we got the biggest snowstorm of the year. Oh, it was bad. On, on St. Patrick's day of 1984, we had like 12 inches in a matter of six hours. Mm-hmm. In fact, you, Jerry, were supposed to come out there and you had some kind of a <clears throat> incident with your car coming out of your garage, right? Uh, actually going into my garage because I, I I just started driving and I was still getting used. And plus I had this old boat of a car, um, a Plymouth, whatever. and uh, Plymouth Satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, trunk was more of, uh, and you wanted to use my trunk because I had such a big trunk for my car. And that was one of the reasons I was going to be coming out to the barn thing, so I was going to carry all the food. You and picked that. up the pizza, didn't you? I think at that time I made. Oh, well, yeah, I think I you must had have. the pizza somehow because we had to come out figure out how to get it from you. Yeah, because and Pete had to drive up in his little Volkswagen and get all the <laughs> Volkswagen. Get like no, no oh my a, gosh. a car that has too much room to one that has no room at all. But anyway, uh, as I was trying to park the uh, my the car in the garage slipped on some ice or <laughs> and then just uh, our garage was very it was a piece of it was, it was i don't even know how to describe the garage other than that it was just like this shack that was shaped in the size of in a type of garage but anyway as i was pulling in slipped and hit one of the three support rails that uh, were holding up the roof uh, and just kind of <laughs> snapped it in half and Needless to say, I didn't, and I think you were all trying to encourage me, ah, come out to the, come on out. Yeah, you know, it's no big deal. It's like, no, man, I do this. I can't watch. I think your dad told you, you're not going anywhere. Pretty much. And so it was, it wasn't that one of my high points in my life. <laughs> well, it wasn't one of my high points either because it was a disaster. You didn't miss anything. There was nobody there. It was embarrassing. It was ultimately embarrassing. But here's a clip of us trying to uh, promote the barn show about a month beforehand. Okay. So wait a minute, do I get the tickets for being on there? Because the... I have a friend, I used to live right by the barn when I lived in Naperville. Yeah, have you been to the place? Have you seen it? Yeah, I go there all the time. What's I it look like? We don't, we haven't been there. Like to October and is it a nice, all the bands. Is it a nice place? It's got a, it's like a stage and everything we hear? It's got a stage, but it's not really that nice in there. Well, we've heard like conflicts. We've heard people say it's really nice. We've heard people that said it's a dump. What is it? Well, see, okay, people that just tune in, we're going to be playing at the barn in Naperville next month, March 17th, Pete's birthday, St. Patrick's Day, that whole thing. And we're, it's a private party. You must be in, personally invited by the S'more gang. So we're going to be giving away about 150 tickets within the next month. Okay, so we did call it the S'morg back then. And that was one of the, a question came up in one of the earlier shows recently. Did we ever call it the S'morg? And I guess we did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I remember calling just even two days before the event. I confirmed 
I confirmed 150 people were supposed to go. They all said they were coming. Liars. And Liars. We had six people show up. And um, yeah, it was terrible. And so we had 25 large pizzas and yeah, the rest is history. So that was the end of our mid season before we got back together again. And of course, actually one of the last things we did before we got back together again, Dave was, and then you, you, you uh, referred to it, I think on the last episode where I parked on the grass, Mm. one of the very last episodes of the previous season I, so every episode I remember, I I always had to bring my own, we always had to bring our own records. So we had our crates of our albums, but because of the Smork show was always over the top, we had other equipment and other things that we brought into the studio. And I remember it was just a pain to have to cart it from the car. So I drove my car right up to the doorway of the radio station and just parked it there. But normally I would bring it back to the street, but I didn't. For whatever reason that night I did not. So there's this car, this Toyota Celica sitting up. Yeah. I think you might've been running <laughs> a little late and then the show started and yeah. then you just left it there. I think you're right. Mm. And the radio station was across the street from, you know, it was a residential area. So you had neighbors who would kind of look out the window and see what was going on. And they had a direct phone line to Fred yeah, Moore. You can imagine. <laughs> The people that all, they all had Fred's number, right? They all had Fred's direct line. Yeah, that's right. They called Fred and they said, uh, there's a car that is parked right up next to the radio station. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Moore. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> this is Mr. Jim. This is Mr. John and over at the, across from the high school, uh, uh is there supposed to be a car <laughs> parked right outside the door on the grass of the high school. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and this well, time <laughs> we made, we had made up with Fred and now we were again. Fred had backed off seat. for a good year. Yeah, I didn't we hear were, anything from Fred. Everything for a year. was good. Yeah. We're and then good. we had to start <laughs> over again and My gosh. <laughs> build relations once again. This was a nightmare. Fred Moore shows up. It's probably, I don't know, 11, 15 for some reason. So this is another example of where you came on to the show. Jeff was off somewhere. I gave him the night off. <laughs> Dave came in and he was partnering with me and we did something. And I think that's probably why I had all this stuff because you and I used to do more stuff than Jeff and I ever did. Fred got that call and he decided not even to phone us. <laughs> he came directly down, but he was wearing his pajamas. And his pajamas. Mm. And... In the middle of a bit, he turned off the transmitter. He didn't even like. Just turn it off. No. Illegal sign off. (laughs) And I even said, Mr. Moore. (laughs) Yeah. That was an illegal. Like, here I'm lecturing Mr. Moore on (laughs) on the rules, right? (laughs) That was an illegal sign off. That was an illegal. (laughs) I don't give a got. Expletive, expletive. Mr. Moore, you're a Mr. minister. Mr. Moore, you're a minister. I don't give oh, a God. God. Okay. Uh, jugular. It was uh, It was frightening. I'd never seen anybody scream this way in my life at me, directly at me. <laughs> he saved all of his wrath for me. Um, yeah. And I was suspended for six weeks. Which was good for Audrey because she was like, okay, cool. I get you for a Saturday, Friday night. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that it, like, it was good for your love life. Yeah. And I think I just spun a bunch of Frank Zappa records for six <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Waiting for me to get off suspension. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, what I was thinking. I mean, yeah. Well, I think <laughs> it wasn't negligence. It was, I mean- not w- willing negligence. It was just, you know, you got caught up in to what you were doing and you forgot that what you usually do, which is to park the car back in its proper location. Yeah. And you couldn't do that at the time. And so uh, you forgot about it. And then a bunch of nosy neighbors called and, well, we just 
told what was going to happen there. He got me on an administrative uh, technicality as opposed to anything that I did with the actual show, which is, you know, he left me alone with the show content. Um, it was really the stupidity of parking my car in the grass that got me suspended. Nothing I had ever done in all the shows. Um, so anyway, so I took six weeks off. Jeff did the, Jeff finished out the season. Yeah. Radio jail. Yeah. So you, he played, you were in radio. I was in jail. radio jail. Jeff played his, you know, he floated his queen albums for six weeks and that was cool. Um, <laughs> But for some reason, uh, we were able to, uh, so you and I, well, see, maybe I'm not remembering it right, but I thought I was filling up that time while you were suspended. So I thought we were back together at that point. No, I, we, 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 we kicked off our show in the summer. So I, I don't remember what happened to Jeff. Cause I remember doing a lot of shows by myself. I think you were still finishing out the open mind season because this was like the end of the, the school year. But whatever it was, I wasn't on the show. Uh, either it was you or Dave or Jeff uh, filling out, f- finishing out the season. I was going out on Saturday night with girlfriend or whatever. Um, but we were able to get back together for what became the last season. And it was really only 10 episodes. And I think the the time away really got us to um, to build our strength and realize that we we're better as a unit than separate. Oh, you know, what? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. There is um, one more thing I want to do, uh, which came in between season. And so this is the only recordings I have of your open mind show. And the only reason why I have it is because I was on it. I don't have anything because I think. I don't know, Jerry, you might've been on the open mind show a couple of times. Were yeah, you ever? I was, I was a couple of times. Yeah. I was definitely on it a couple of times. It was past my bedtime. I was always going to bed. It was a Sunday night. It was Sunday late night. Yeah. Time. So I didn't, I, I listened to a few shows. I didn't, right. I wasn't able to listen to much of them. So I showed up on your show and uh, this was the, um, the, the taking on the last, taking on from the episode of my dad showing a uh, uh, calling in for the dateline. We decided to do it our own dateline. And so Actually, I think this was a combination of the two of our shows. On my show, we did In Search of a Salad Bar that we would select for the ultimate contest winner to go to. And then we did the Dateline on the Open Mind Show. So this is the Salad Bar search <laughs> that we, um, we made some calls to some local restaurants to find the best salad bar. So here's a few clips uh, trying to find the perfect salad bar. Hello, this is Chris and Dave. We're calling from WDGC Radio in Downers Grove, and we're on the air right now, and we're calling up different uh, restaurants in and around Chicagoland, and we're looking for the best salad bar to send a uh, contest winner. And if you have a, a minute or two, could you explain uh, or tell us about your salad bar and what's outstanding about it? Do you have, do you have some time? I'd be delighted to, to tell you we have no salad bar. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, well, hold on. Maybe you could still, we might consider you. How about, uh, what's the attire like? Is there any uh, formal attire? Oh, no. No particular attire is required. Just have to show up and then you can eat. That's right. Okay. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> and then I give it a try. I, 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 I place in a call and try it myself. Okay. Hello, uh, this is Chris and Dave. We're from WDGC FM Radio in uh, Downers Grove, and uh, we're on the air right now. And we're calling up restaurants in the suburbs, and we're finding out. Um, we're trying to judge salad bars. Do you have a salad bar? No, we don't. You don't. Okay, because we're uh, looking for a place uh, to send a contest winner tomorrow night, and uh, you don't have one, huh? No, no salad bar. Sorry, I won't be able to help you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. And then we give uh, we let Pete try to uh, try to try out a, a call. Can I do a call? You want to come in here and do it? Yeah. Come on in. All right. Okay. It's getting too hot in here though. I gotta leave. Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the phone. Go ahead, dial. Okay. WDDC FM, Downers Grove, 22 minutes in front of midnight. Right, I'm calling the Grand Mandarin in Lyle. The Grand Poobah. I'm the Grand Poobah of rock and roll. I used to be. I'm the Grand Dragon. That wasn't 
funny. Hi, uh, this is Pete McCain. I'm actually here in substitution for Chris and Dave, and uh, I'd like to, uh, well, actually, we're on the radio right now, and I'd like to know if you have a salad bar and what you have in it, if you have one. You mean a Sunday brunch? No, 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 uh, like a salad bar, like an open salad bar. Uh-huh. Do you have one? Yes, I do. <laughs> Oh, you, that's good. Okay, can, uh, can mm -hmm. you tell me, like, what's in it? Uh, what can I do for you? Because uh, we are very busy right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you see, we're going to be, uh, we're giving away, a, uh, we're giving a contest winner <laughs> uh, a night out on the town. And the winner... Uh, I'm sorry for that, okay? Thank you for calling. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Strike three. Uh, one more here. He kind of blew it last time. I don't trust him anymore. <laughs> hey, it was her fault. Please open the door. She was the only one who pulled it. Hi, uh, this is Pete McCain. I'm here uh, <laughs> substituting for Chris and Dave, and I was wondering if you have a salad bar. <laughs> uh, to my knowledge, um, we do have a salad bar. Are you a jerk or what? <laughs> You're being transferred. It means they don't want you. They're sending you to the. Hi, uh, I was wondering what you have in your salad. Tell them on the air. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Some, some, guy, some guy just said you had a salad bar and he switched me over to you. Uh, no we don't, sir. Oh, oh, by the way, you're on the air right now. Are you busy right now? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, of course she's busy. Okay, well, it's like a Saturday night, so... Yeah. Uh, you see, um, we're sponsoring a night out on the town, and we were, like, giving away places that have good salad bars. But since you don't have a salad bar... <laughs> <laughs> you like to own your own restaurant. <laughs> You're giving away a restaurant with a salad yeah, bar. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, since yeah. you don't have a salad bar, I guess you don't qualify, huh? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> We're giving away places that have salad bars. That's right. <laughs> You're filling in from Chris and Dave. We're filling in for Chris and Dave. Who's this guy? Who's this clown? <laughs> one last one here. For Snicks. Hello. Good Good morning, morning. Downers Grove. How are you? Um, I was. I just want to tell you about our new salad bar. Okay. Who is this? What? Who is this? My name's Chris. I'm from Little Italian. Are you Little Italian? Little Italian. Oh, in Bolingbrook? No. Little Italian doesn't have a salad bar. We do now. It's new. Hogwash. <laughs> That's your girlfriend, Jerry. Fuck you. <gasps> Keep, oh. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> That was Judy Huff again, I think, Jerry. So she she drops the F-bomb, and then we play the Pink Floyd edited version. Not now, John. Yeah. Stuff all that. Okay. Yeah. I do remember that vaguely now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I wasn't... I don't know why it wasn't the... I mean, I was in the studio? You were... You were in the studio. Oh, crying. Yeah, so she called us to tell us, oh, we got a salad bar for you. And then you said hogwash. Hogwash. A little Italian doesn't have a salad bar. <laughs> we knew our stuff back then. You can't put one over on us. <laughs> was that a pizza joint? A little Italian. Uh, I, I, don't I think it was just an Italian restaurant, right? Like, oh, okay. um, sit down. You got pizza. Okay. I, Whatever. I thought it was just like 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 uh, there used to be a pizza. This might still be in downtown Downers Grove. Angelos. Yeah, Angelos. Angelos has made some nice, nice, nice pizza. Ah, it's a nice thin crust. So we did find. Uh, I think Ponderosa won. Well, it kind of makes sense, don't you? I mean, we'll that was see. good. That was a good salad bar. In fact, I remember in college that we used to. Go there because it was like whatever six ninety nine. You got a salad bar, Sal Salisbury steak, and you could all you can eat. That was like a great way to spend the afternoon with your books. Just yeah. sit there and just until you got hungry again, you just ate another more salad bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm surprised he didn't send them off to Wendy's, but maybe at the time Wendy's didn't have the salad bar. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. So we we found the place, and so the next night. On Dave's Open Mind show, we had the Dateline, and for two solid hours, we took phone calls from guys who wanted to date Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was on the staff. She's actually, um, somehow she made a radio career. Uh, she's doing something with radio now. Mm. I don't know exactly what she's done, but um, she was on the show, and we were basically putting her up there as the prize. <laughs> 
and guys would call up and, you know, try to get her to select them. Yeah. And uh, here's, I'm going to play this next clip. We're going to take a break here and just listen and float this out. Jerry, you're actually the, one of the first callers. <laughs> <laughs> Into the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I I don't think this is gonna end well for me. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> well you didn't get you didn't win, I don't think. Well <laughs> the story of my life back then. Actually the story of my life now. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing, but this is uh this is good. I just picked up um, every time I get embarrassed, it always makes good <laughs> good material <laughs> material for you. Uh this is so inside joke. Um, but I'm having a good time. Here's, um, Dateline on Dave Jackson's Open Mind show. You're on the air. Hey! hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jerry! Hey, it's Bob about- Bell. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> Talk about self-fulfilling prophecy. Hey, Bozo. Jerry Belowski's. Hey. <laughs> All right. Did you want to do with me, Sounds Jerry? like you're having a riot there. No, we're not, actually. We're oh, I just, uh, just tuned you in. Okay. I was watching the Ten Commandments with that great actor Charlton Heston. Woo! Yeah, that's not a good Hollywood movie. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Especially when they split the Red Sea in half. That's beautiful. That was just beautiful. We're done. All right, well, what's this thing? Uh, this Kelly, date Kathy line. Kelly line? Kathy yeah, Kelly Kathy line? Kelly's looking for a date. What? Describe and, yourself, uh, Jerry. Oh, so my. Describe yourself, Jerry. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe this is my show. Uh, is this is <laughs> What? Uh, I'm about six feet, two Can't inches, mm-hmm. and I have red hair. Yeah. Hey, a, you got hey, red hair. Bozo red. Well, now everybody knows. <laughs> Big deal. Okay, I that Will you shut up let me describe myself? Go ahead. I'm listening. Shut no, I'm talking about Chris. I'll make him shut up. Yeah. Go ahead, Jer. Um, hazel eyes. Um, regular build, I don't know. Maybe slightly chubby. No, not actually. Uh, not, nothing spectacular except my spectacular personality. <laughs> that, what else do you want me to say? Any particulars? Is there any particular thing that you want to know about me? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. We were being quiet. I left. I, I, I went to sleep. I was talking to Kathy. I wasn't talking to you guys. I was, I was listening. I was listening really Yeah, hard. and I was, well, if you were listening, you Well, can you give me in, in 12 words or less why you want to go out with me? Um, can, you, can you tell me in 12 words or less? I've never met you before. That would be one reason. I yeah, never... you have met me. I've met you before. I know I'm not supposed to know who you are, but I know who you are. I've met you before. I was in the station last year. I just oh, you met him last kids. year? You didn't yeah. see him recently? Well, no. Jerry's changed his image over the last year. Oh, okay. Tell yeah, I'm not such a dork you. as I was last time. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wasn't such a I wasn't such a weirdo as I was last time. Oh. Were you gonna say I've, I've, I've straightened up. You know I've straightened means, up and Jerry? slide right. What? Jerry, how old are you, Jer? Eighteen. Eighteen. Is that too old? Hey, he's older than you are. Oh. Well. But isn't well, the, isn't the new thing well, to have like? Kathy. Oh, how old are you? I- I'm sixteen. Oh, that's okay. That's isn't okay. the new thing like all the all the females want those younger things now? Well, Jer, let me tell you, we'll consider you. Okay. I certainly hope so. We got a lot of calls coming. Three feet up. Okay. Yeah. See you later. All right, bye, Jer. All right, Jer. Bye. <laughs> okay, that was Jer. Just, just club them off anytime, Dave. All right, should we take some more or what? Yeah, please yeah. call in now. Eight five two zero four zero four. If you'd like to uh, date this um hunk of thing over here. Kidding. Uh, the date is for probably next weekend. Yeah, and the salad is free. Here we go. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I am calling about dating uh, Katrina Kelly. Jace. <laughs> yes. Hello. You sound yes. like a mixture of Irish and Spanish. Jace. Yes. Do you know him? No. Who is this? What's your name? I would like to date Katrina. What's your name? My name? Yes. Ricardo Romero. Ricardo Romero. Oh, very romantic <laughs> sounding. Very oh, romantic. What do you look like? I I am tall. Uh huh. I am dark with black hair and blue eyes. Uh huh. Is that hair all over your face? <laughs> oh no, hair on my face. What do you do? Do you clean cut? You shave your mustache? I shave. Do you have a goatee? <laughs> what? Mustache? A goatee? A goatee? No, not no more. I I shave my goatee. Uh huh. I I I I I have six feet two two inches tall. What do you do? What do I do? Uh-huh. <laughs> he does it up. I, 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 I do sex, yes. 
You do what? You do? Oh, you do that. Well, I what do you do? Pretty like, girl. Do you I did pretty girls like Katrina. Uh-huh. See. Si. See? Si. What, what else nationality would you are you? Know? What, um, what, do you go to school? School? Uh-huh. <laughs> what, what, what is this school? What is school? <laughs> How old are you? I am 18. Uh-huh. Islam 18? You know, you, you remind me a lot about the, uh, of the guy that I'm going to prom with. Prom? Yeah. What is prom? It's a dance. <laughs> I love to dance, I know the carnival tango! All right, well, Islamic we'll fried chicken, does that mean anything to you? <laughs> I have, you know the 12 words or less, you want to know why I go to Katikali? Uh-huh. Okay, I have six of the 12 words. Okay. I, Juan, you play chess in the sand? A, A, piece of meat! We have got to get together <laughs> sometime. Okay, well, we'll consider you, all right? Gracias. Well, thank you for your call. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye. As well, you're on the air. Hello? Hello. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the guy who's taking Kathy to prom. What, what's my name doing on the air? <laughs> what is this, Kathy? What's going on? Uh, nothing. Some guy just called to remind me a lot about you. Is this you. Tom? Well, no. I'm over here at a friend's house, and I... No, this isn't Tom. No, this is, this uh, is my date to prom. And I heard some... You, I heard you talking about... You're taking a guy to... You're taking a... You thought it was your prom date. No, I said it reminds me of the guy that I'm going to prom with. Did you hear him? He sounded like a jerk, Kathy. I know he did, but he reminded me of you. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. like Kathy. Good Lord. I'm more swab, swab. Swab. I'm more debonair. I'm much more romantic, I'm sure, than that cretin. <laughs> well, I'm better than that thing. Late night radio. Late night radio. And by the way, who you won't, won't find this anywhere Kathy? else. Did you know that me. guy? What? Did you know that guy? Yeah. I love when they spat. <laughs> what is he, Irish, Spanish, Islamic? I think he was Islamic. What the hell is going on? Uh, don't say that on the air. Pardon me? You're on the air. Can't yeah. say that. You know you're on the air, don't you? Obviously, yeah, since he's talking to hey, you Hey, Steve Dahl why can't I? Because you're not Steve Dahl. Because you're not fat. We gotta get moving on. Okay, we gotta get moving on. Thanks for your call. Bye. Uh, 852-0404 if you'd like to uh, date Keep it clean, folks. Kathy Kelly. You're on the air. Hey, I think that guy who called up and the guy before it was that Islamic, Irish, Spanish guy are the two of the same people. Nah. You sure? I'm positive, Jer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jerry. Right. Well, Jerry what? Do me a favor. Though. Watch Doctor Who and tell me how it turns out. Bye, Jer. I get yeah. I get You're on the air. Hello. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Hi. If you've called once, Kathy, I'm sorry, I think you this can't. is the guy. I really do. I mean... <laughs> Uh, this guy's so good. <laughs> I, I'm calling to talk for my brother. Uh-huh. Ricardo, he called before. <laughs> yeah. Cat, I mean, this guy's creative and everything. Go for it. Uh-huh. He, he is really nice. Uh, we're, we, he's up there. He's in the top three. <laughs> he's he, he American boy. He good. He good? Real good. <laughs> All right. Okay. Talk. Well, we're going to let some other people call in, okay? No, 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 no. It's got to be Bye. Ricardo. Bye. No. Bye. Oh. Bye. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good radio, Dave. Last few minutes of Win a Dream Date with Kathy Kelly, then we're having Win a Dream Date with Sarah. I like your idea for a f okay, as a Sarah, format for your show, Dave. No, I like your format. No, I'm, I'm, you like this? I like what you do with the show. Hello. I just want to say that Lithuanians oh. make great lovers. Jerry. <laughs> just like I told you to go watch Doctor Who or something. What? Jerry, I told you to go watch Doctor TV. Who. You're hey. taking other people's time, okay? Come on, we're no. paying good money for this show. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. I want my dinner pine rosa, and I've got. I want every option. I'm I loaded. What? I'm loaded. I you're loaded. You're trying to say you're. And I don't. I don't mean alcoholically either. <laughs> Never mind. Well, That's an adverb too. That's you're, correct You've called usage. us maybe four or five times now, so we're gonna let some other people call, okay? Yeah, I know. I just wanted to put my last bid in. Okay. Like Pete said. Bid. See you later, then. Bye, Jerry. Fine. So this is the final time I'm calling. All okay. right. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye. bye. Doctor Who. Don't threaten us, Jerry. <laughs> Hello. You mean, you're, you're on the air. You want me to tell you where to go with the show, Dave? Hello. You're on the air, sir. Hello. You're on the air. I'm the one. You're the one? Oh, yeah. I'm the can one. You, can you listen to your radio? Can you turn your radio on so you can hear us? Yeah, I can. Just the opposite, like when you're called by other stations. Do you, you have your radio, radio on? Up. Yeah, we don't, you can't hear us on the phone. Okay, because you can't hear us on the phone. So I'm going to hang up the phone, stay on the line, and listen to your radio, okay? We're very loose Hold format. On. But still talk through your phone. Don't talk through your radio. Are you there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's your name? Joe. Jim? Joe. Joe. Joe? How yeah. old are you, Joe? 17. Yo, 17. Joe. Where do you go to school? Naperville Central. Ooh, we're getting a lot of varied calls here. What do you look like, Joe? I'm Italian. You're Italian. We can't go hear for you, it. Kathy. 
Italians are Can you hear great. me? I'm sorry. Chris has the microphone down too low. Oh, <laughs> you're Italian? Oh, uh, it's like Italians light on the world lovers. now. Ita- Italians are they great are. lovers. I'm one of them. I'm, oh, yeah, I- right. Irish people are great lovers too because I'm 100% Irish. Yeah, Italian girls, uh, Italian guys and Irish girls are great mixtures. Uh huh. Oh, well, tell me about yourself, Joe. What do you want to know? Oh, why do you want to go out with me? Because I hear you're pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah, but do you run home on Prince Spaghetti Day? Uh, yeah. Oh, Wednesday, 100% Prince Spaghetti Day. <laughs> yes, we know. You two can please be <laughs> Prince Spaghetti Day. Well, um, what do you look like? I know you're Italian, but, like, what do you look like? I got brown, black, brownish black hair. Mm hmm. Brown eyes. Mm hmm. About 5'8. <laughs> yeah. About 150. Uh huh. Do you lift weights? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh huh. Do you play football? Yeah. Wow. Do you know anybody from. Uh, how do you, How did you find out that I was pretty good looking? <laughs> uh, from listening to the radio show, they say you're pretty good looking. Oh, you listen to the radio show and find out. Well, um, what do you. Do you. Okay, I guess you already told us about yourself. Wow. Okay, well, why, why do you want to go out with me in 12 words or less, besides the fact that I'm good looking? <laughs> Because I'm looking forward, hey, to, what? looking forward to meeting a new girl from a different town. Oh, okay. Hey, that's very valid. That's good. That's Thanks. good. Thank you. All right. What's your name again? Joe. 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 All right. Thanks for calling, Joe. Okay. Bye. All right. Hey, he sounded pretty good. Yeah, he didn't sound like a jerk. That's true. <laughs> but he was short. Are you trying to oh, imply that the really rest short. of them are jerks? <laughs> no. No, I, w- I didn't think so, Dave. Hello, you're yeah. on the air, dating line. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, anybody that would really actually, like, call in and... Hey, it's Tom Skilling. <laughs> Who? Tom Skilling. Yeah, What's the weather I'm like, Tom? Him. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Tom Skilling. How you doing? Why, why not? People Dr. Dave Eisen. People calling in like this, and I mean, they're <laughs> apparently losers, and the only person I can really figure that really should it's be going Ricardo! Ricardo! Ricardo who? Romero. I don't remember Ricardo. Oh, he sounds like a wonderful guy. <laughs> but what I was talking about was Buster Hyman. He is a fun guy. I know he is. He tells me he is. <laughs> take my t- take his word for it. Ask him any time. He'll tell you. He's. I wasn't listening. I I tuned um, out. Thank you. Um, I think we should have. I think that should, maybe that should be the last call. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> Good show, Dave. <laughs> You had to have an open mind. <laughs> Fred was already asleep by that point, so you didn't hear that. Nice. Always pushing the envelope. Yeah. Sometimes you just had to go with it. Some of the best material came in from those calls. That yeah. was fun. Did we do anything that creative ever again? Until the oh. podcast started? Oh, yeah, because we haven't even started the uh, second season yet. Which 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 is starting now. Remember this. Um, so we had exhausted all of our options for doing live broadcasts, so we decided to take it to outer space. We're broadcasting live from the moon. By the way, I'll come back after this because there's some um, technical details that are inaccurate in this, and we will uh, talk about that afterwards. We're broadcasting, We're broadcasting live from the moon. And it's quite scary, scary up here right now. Right now. Right now. I'll tell you. I can't, I can't see. see. And I like light. This is not, this is not even funny anymore. I know. It's pretty scary. We took we off took a little off while, while ago, ago. And we're and not going to be up here for long. I'm telling you, man. I don't like it up here. I can't move. <laughs> I feel like there's an <laughs> elephant sitting. One of your, one of your elephant, elephant jokes, jokes, jokes is sitting on. Sitting on. <laughs> I don't, I don't like it. Don't up like here. it like we thought we'd do we our show up here on the moon, moon to a creative, creative remote. remote. No one showed, no one showed up. up. The band didn't show up. Kind of like the barn show. Yeah. The band that you just heard was on tape. The marimba band was not live tonight. They were on tape. I don't know. No one showed up for the party. We have a massive party here on the moon, and no one showed up. We've been we've been promoting this big moon party for the last. Four or five weeks weeks on this radio station, station. we gave out invitations, 125 tickets, we ordered $400 worth of pizza and food. The place is costing us about $87 to rent out for the next four hours, and nobody shows up. Yeah, the moon is going to be a big tourist attraction. In fact, That's why we're up here. You know that commercial for that restaurant or that dance place where they say, come on over while it's still a secret? 
Uh, yeah, 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 right. right. Yeah. Well, that's well, what that's the moon, what is, the moon right is right now. It's just kind of a, a few folks know about it. And of course, the 10 minute travel time is just incredible. I mean, it sounds great. I mean, here we are. I mean, doing a remote. The delay is minimal. I mean, there is some delay. There must be an echo back home. There must be some sort of echo. I, I, I know for a fact that when you broadcast to Pluto, the farthest planet from Earth, it takes one hour for the tran for the message to reach from Earth to Pluto. So it takes two. It can't be right. Yeah, because it takes light about nine hours to get to Pluto. And sound is slower than light is. It takes nine hours. Yeah, eight point something. I figured it out. The moon is only something like two seconds. Round trip. Yeah, I found that out because I watched that uh, Peter Ustinov special that was on uh, Channel 11. He did a thing on uh, Einstein. Well, he was talking about light. They, they beam light to the moon, and there's a mirror, and then it bounces back. And that's how they measure the speed of light. Because they left mirrors, or the astronauts left mirrors. And also, wasn't there an astronaut that was left behind here once? In space? Yeah, we should go look yeah. For him. No, on the planet here. On, on the moon, sorry. On the moon? No, I don't think I planet. I remember. I thought there was someone left, left here. Left here. Some, Russian some Russian guy or something. Guy or something. No. It was, no, like, it was a, like a kind of exile, exile type, type thing. thing. Isn't he up here? I don't know if, if somebody was somebody left, left on the moon. On the moon. You, mean you mean deserted, deserted and the spaceship Soviet, yeah, went back? back. back. The, spaceship the spaceship went back home? Yeah. Kind of an Ayatollah type situation. Well, I'm not kind of prepared to go looking for a guy on this moon here. I mean, come on. You can tell us how to get down. You want to take calls? I don't know. John Duncan, John Duncan back in the, back studio. In the studio. I don't know if we can set that up or not. John, John, uh, John, can't, John talk can't talk, talk back, back to us. To us. We don't, we don't, we don't, we're on the we're air, on I hope. Yeah. yeah. And like I say, there, like must, I say, be there must be an, an echo, echo because, because the way DGC's equipment, equipment work, work, works, works with the delay and everything. Yeah. I wonder how it sounds. You want to take some calls? John? We don't have an air monitor up here. We need one. Hello, you're broadcasting live on the moon. How you doing? How you doing? Sounds pretty good. Thanks. Thanks. Why don't you play Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah, we were yeah, thinking, we were thinking about, about that. that. Um, um, we want to play that. Should we play uh, Eclipse, Eclipse and, and Brain Damage? Brain damage? Uh, yeah, what about, what about Breathe? 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 Well, that's well, kind of too short. Too short. And I don't, and it doesn't really, it doesn't tie, doesn't really tie, tie in with the moon too much. I have a question. Why is this? Why is the caller in reverberation? Because we're hearing it. So everything that we hear is being sent back. Okay, but we'll okay, play that we'll for you within the yeah, next half hour. Even, even when the astronauts, this has to be all set up, right? This guy is not real, obviously. He can't be, because even when the astronauts talk back, it's not immediate. Do, do you hear a delay, sir, on, on the radio? How about on the phone? That too. You hear it on the phone too? Yeah. Hmm. Pretty weird, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. All right. Bye-bye. 88.3 WGGC, uh, Chris and Dave broadcasting live from the moon. <laughs> Jeez, what were you thinking? So a couple of things wrong there. <clears throat> First of all, radio waves travel at the speed of light, not sound. Mm. And uh, I did find out how long does it take for light to travel from Earth to Pluto? It's like, isn't it like five hours or something? Yeah, it's actually right. Five yeah. and a half hours. Yeah. So it would take... 10, 11 hours, basically, to get a signal sent to Pluto and back if you're speaking to them. Mm. Interesting. Right. So it wouldn't be instantaneous yeah. communication. Well, who knows? You know, speak, just doing that thing, it was just it was just wacky. We were trying to come up with something different. I don't even know how we did the uh, reverb thing. That was cool, though. <laughs> well, that effect you got through the real to real. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you would... Oh, yeah. You record, you, you send a signal into the reel-to-reel, -reel, and then you play back the reel-to-reel -reel, you, um, while you're recording into it. So you play it back yeah. on, the, uh, on the, uh, the playback head. So it was a shorter version of the flashback situation where we right. spent it across two shorter. machines. This yeah. was just on the same machine. You recorded and played it back at the same time. Yeah. Somehow we discovered that. and It was like, eh, let's do a live from the moon thing. <clears throat> and then we got into our get a life period and we've and uh, a few episodes back i did a compilation of the get a lifes that we did on the smork show podcast the more recent um reenactments of it but of course it's got its roots in the original show and here's just a couple of callers from the get a life show 
The object of the game is to get a life better than the one you have presently. What you need to play is a worthless life that leaks oil and makes strange sounds when you go around the corner that you would like to trade in on a new 1984 life that gets good mileage and enables you to pick up chicks or guys with ease. It also helps you get that vice presidential job that you know you deserve. You must show that uh, you deserve a better life by being polite, receptive, and humble. There's an added bonus if you laugh at all our jokes. And uh, all lives given on the way on the show tonight include an official WDDC smorgasbord ID card that says you're 21. You get air conditioning, a view of the lake, a five-year or 50,000-mile warranty on all movable parts, a one-week warranty that enables you to return your life if all that was stated is not true in the long run. And you must allow four to six weeks for delivery, and that's how long it'll take to say goodbye to your friends because we're probably going to have to move you so give us a call, 852-0404, get free prizes. Hey, we'll give away some albums, too, hey. You read that really well. You're going to make it in this business. I even did it before the music. I had time to spare. Hello? Hey, I need a life. Oh, that's good. Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us um, your average day. Explain what you do in the day and what makes it so terrible that you have to get another life. Oh, uh, well, I wake up in the morning about 6. You gotta yeah, let, you need uh, a new life. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the problems. Uh, you got to let all the animals in the house that are outside. Then we got to go, uh, we got to, it depends on what day it is. You either got to mow all these lawns or got to go to swim team practice. And <clears throat> it gets real hectic some days and get yelled at from all these different people. Mm. And I don't know, somewhere around the afternoon, take a nap and then have to get up and go to work. And people just yell at you all day long and it's something you don't need. Okay, so what kind of life are you looking for? Are you want more, uh, more exciting? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, we got that for you. All of our lives tonight are good ones. Pick behind door number one, door number two, and door number three, and we will give you that uh, particular life. Uh, door number three. Door number three. Well, open up that door, Dave. Okay. Hey! Hey, if you like spending lots of money, this is the life for you because you've just become a buyer for Home Hardware of West Chicago. Ooh. Yes. We're moving you to sunny downtown Aurora for the privilege of being a purchasing agent a sp and spending a lot of money. Hey, that's uh, a pizza job. This? Even though you never get to see a dime and none of it's yours, but you get to spend it and you always wanted to know what hardware was all about and now you know. Have fun and hope you don't get fired in seven months. <laughs> that's great. You want it? You like it? Well, it's yours. I mean, you've got no choice. You called up. You're committed. <laughs> you are now a buyer for Home Hardware of West Chicago. Yeah, I got something to look forward for tomorrow. What else, Chris? What else do we have for this fine gentleman? You get the nice view of the lake and the five-year or 50,000-mile warranty on all movable parts and a one-week warranty. That uh, if you don't like your life in a week, you can call back and exchange it for something else. All right. That sounds good. Let's take care of some business. We'll get your name and address. We'll come back, and we'll do another life if okay. we have time. Unless uh, Baba's here. Or I'll Tell me. Call back. Call back uh, after the next one, during the next song. All right. Okay. Thanks this song. is no joke. This is no imitation. <laughs> All right. We really will write you and send you a bunch of neat things. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure to. Thanks for calling. All right. Enjoy your new life. I will indeed. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. 852 We have got another life to give away. We, yeah, do, we do two every week. Yeah, two a week. And all, all the lives tonight are great. So if you pick door number two or three, you're guaranteed... A great life. Eight five two zero four zero four. Come on, we like to hear from you. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Chris and Dave just waiting for a phone call. Anybody? That means you. Sitting there in the back seat of your car, just go in the kitchen and eight five two zero four zero four is the number you can use and get a brand new life. You must need a life if you're sitting in the back of your car in the garage. I want to get alive. 8520404. Somebody get phone? us out of the hole. Did you hang the phone up? Good. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. <laughs> that was the most massive hang up I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Talk about somebody with hang ups. <laughs> Dave gets one. What? Oh, a bell? Yeah. Let's wait another minute and then let's just move on. Ring my bell. See, there are people out there that are listening. That proves it. Hello. Hello? This is no joke. Hi. 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 You want a life? No. Yeah. You're going to get one. What? You're going to get one. What kind of uh, day do you... Wh why do you want to change your life? Um, because mine is totally bogus. False? Your life bogus. is false? Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I 
am having problems with the phone right now. Wait, just a second. All right, um... So hey, that's good enough. Open up door number two. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, let's okay. see it. Okay. That's, uh, okay, door number two. That was a bad door. What about three? Yeah. Well, Nina, I sure hope you like the blues because you'll be spending a lot of time on 43rd Street at the Checkerboard Lounge because... It's yours. As the owner and operator of the Checkerboard Lounge, you'll be scheduling acts such as Johnny Winter, Junior Wells, Buddy Guy, and a host of others. Some of the best blues players in the world. Should um. I go on? The Checkerboard Lounge is located on the south side of Chicago in the deepest, darkest part of the city. And it's all yours, courtesy of WDGC-FM. Uh, you'll be the only white person there. <laughs> yeah, that's why you've got 24-hour guard service. And uh, you live right on top of the lounge. <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. Yeah, sounds real great. I'm sure I'll be totally thrilled. <laughs> she right. sounds thrilled, I'll tell you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's wild stuff. I, what high school stations doing that kind of material? <laughs> oh, <laughs> none, no, none, no. none. <laughs> I would listen to that today if I came across something like that, that on the radio. That was painful. I was just <laughs> dying out there. It's kind of a good point you made there, though. I mean, think of all the different high school radio stations that were across the country back in the early 80s. Do you think any of them did anything like that? No, I don't. No. So in that respect, for high school radio or even college radio, you were highly unique. <laughs> It's like, where is the kind of crazy personality driven radio thing happening in like college or high school radio? And it's like, it's here. It was there. I wish I could find something like that. I would listen. Yeah, I would too. Even now. It's the theater of the mind. Yes. Very important. Very important. Very important. Well, we've played um, other ones on the show before, that, like the gynecologist, gynecologist of the stars. That's my favorite. That's, that's Why my don't we favorite. play it? Why don't we just play it? Come it's, on. Just, let's do it. Do it. This was good. This was do like an also pushing the limits for high school radio. Hello, sir. Yeah. What's your name again? Tom. Tom. Okay. Where, where are you calling from? What town? Down this Grove. Yeah, you need a life. Okay, so. Um, she, We're right behind Did you me. go to Heritage Fest? No, I didn't go. Oh, that's good. Maybe he doesn't need a life. <laughs> I was going to say, if you did and you had a good time, then you need a life. Then you, right you know, yeah. you are you easily come to the pleased. right place and there is, there is hope. Okay. There's always hope. Okay, we have three doors yeah. in the studio. Door number one, door number two, and door number three for tonight. Next week we'll have questions and all that that you have to um, answer. We have nothing planned for tonight. But, sir, you pick behind door number one, door number two, and door number three, and we'll tell you what your new life is. Uh, door number three. Door number three. Okay, um... Should I open that door? Yeah, I'll do the door, all right? Okay. <laughs> That's right. Your life is gynecologist of the stars. Your regular yeah. clients include Chrissy Hind, Jacqueline Smith, Natasha Kinski, Stevie Nicks, and Olivia Newton-John. One of the new men. You will charge $400 an hour, and your work is known all around the world. Gynecology Today magazine has given you the Man with the Steady Hands Award for the fifth year in a row. You're at the peak of your career and fame and fortune. Even Prince Charles has given you complete charge of Lady Di. Have a great life and thanks for playing Get a Life. You want it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're the gynecologist of the stars. Congratulations. That's cool. Okay, so next week we'd like to have you call back and tell us how, how it was. Tasha Kinski's next baby. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, thank you for playing Get a Life, sir. And uh, hold on. We're going to get your name and address, and we're going to send you out a couple things like your ID card and stuff. Okay. And uh, we'll send you a dollar along Man, with that. These guys are a bunch of losers. One dollar, okay? That's cool. All right, hold on. More dope. That's Get a Life for this. We are hosts, Chris and Dave. And uh, hey, it's 940, and. I want more dope. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Doing a dope. stupid show, Dave. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. How about you? Listening to this show, you need a life, so call us up. Yeah. So we'll send out time his ID card, his um, his new life, with new air conditioning and a view of the lake, and it's all supplied by WDGC FM and the Chris and Dave Smorgas Board. Hey, you forgot. The next time you're in the shower. 
and Chris and Dave stop in, say the Smorg Show podcast is going to make me rich and win. <laughs> oh, man, I cracked myself up. <sighs> That was that was uh, that was good. That was cutting edge. Thanks to Pete McCain for the, as being the writer. Oh, Pete! Pete cranked out the material back then. Man, yeah. Unlike <laughs> unlike now. Unlike now. Yeah. Well, that's enough of that. Yeah. Um. And I must I must play this final get a life, which is where we turned over the rights to Fred Moore, our general manager. So on our last episode of the Smorg Show, uh, Smorgasbord radio show, we had Fred come in and we reconciled. We, we gave him a, a plaque. We gave him a tie. Yeah, I remember that. And he came onto the last show and we just basically said, here you go, here are the rights to the show. And here, here's the last Get a Life on our last show on August uh, 17th, 20, uh, 1984. That's right, Mr. Moore, you won. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best thing of all, the rights and privileges to the WDDGCFM Smorgasbord. Yes, you'll be paid twice what we're making now for preparing, putting together, and broadcasting the WDDGC Smorgasbord every week for the rest of your life. Here are some of the duties you will be required to do. Provide support for an East Indian, three camels, a bad cook, and a man named Jerry Malauskas. That's two S's at the end of Malauskas. Putting together and financing live broadcast parties that no one shows up to. We have to put up with complaints from the general manager, which is you, the staff, and the audience without quitting or getting thrown off of your show. Also, last but not, certainly not the least, uh, rewarding and the hardest thing to do uh, in the Smartest Sports Show is uh, that you have to create and write two lives every week for the uh, Get a Life show. And of course, it will be hard to do. I don't know who wrote this, but here's what it says, as well as the guy who's doing it now, but there is always hope. I tried to make it sound good. Thanks for playing Get a Life, Mr. Moore, and when you become rich and famous from owning it, don't forget us little guys. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Thanks for calling. We'll wait see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. I'd rather have the cash value. Cash value? Well, I think, um, <laughs> what does it cost now for a, uh, a sheet of onion skin paper? Uh, no, not too not much. It's not even a penny, is it? Uh, I think you'd be better off with the actual rights to the show. You can do so much with it. And that way, you hold the rights from all the students. That means that they cannot steal the idea next year and do a smorg show and uh, I think it's better for you that way if you hold on to the rights otherwise you're gonna have two zany guys like us for the next four years and I don't think you want that well on the first show I do I have a real neat prize to give away oh yeah oh a tie a tie <laughs> my interest is that the one we gave you tonight <laughs> hey how'd you get <laughs> I guess he looked at his wardrobe and nothing matches with it, huh? Yeah, that's too bad. Well, we could, we could buy you a pair of uh, polyester pants with the same design on it as the tie. Oh, that would be very nice. And then you could wear that to school, you know? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. And we'll uh, <laughs> talk to you soon. Maybe we'll come back Easter vacation. Mr. Moore, can I tell you that you're zany? Can I tell you that? I'm zany? Yes, can I tell you that? Oh, tell me that. Mr. Moore, you're zany. Oh, gee. And you're going places. What does zany mean? <laughs> you're going places. Look it up in the dictionary. I'm okay. sure you've got one. You're a okay. teacher. Okay. We'll come back Easter vacation and... We'll bug you. Thanks for playing Get a Life. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that he uh, ended up, after we left, for, I don't know, whatever we went on to, college, uh, he ended up playing our shows for his uh, radio class, from what I understand, and basically what, what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, I gave him a little tape. I think part of that, that plaque tie thing, we gave him a tape of all of our best bits, the ones that irritated him. And then he played it for his, uh, his high school staff, or t uh, his classes, which I think was the bi biggest form of flattery. Probably not intended to be, but yeah. <laughs> and we inspired not one person to continue... <laughs> No, nobody. Nobody came after us. Nobody. After, they, they locked down that place. It was locked down. Well, I, I don't Radio think... Radio in a box. I don't even think... It was, well, probably was locked down, but I think just nobody had the imagination to do what you guys did. I just think you're kind of like a... I don't want to say a flash in a pan, but you're were, you were just kind of that once... It's a perfect storm. You guys were kind of a perfect storm and the things coming together. 
Nobody. I mean, think of all the other people that were on at you at the same time, uh, all the other, you know, high school DJs. None of them had even had anything close to an interesting... I mean, they did their show, and each one had their own little niche, but they didn't They didn't expand. They didn't do the whole kind of radio theater thing. You guys did. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why, I, if it was top-down, you know, sort of like, okay, now we're really locking this place down, or there was no bottom-up force of uh, trying to do something. Well, I mean, don't you think that in some extent you kind of answered your own question and the fact that uh, why there was nothing after you? Because when you were doing these shows, you had all of these other staff members that were like flipping out over what you were doing. Right. So I don't think anybody there, even if they wanted to do it, had the guts to do it, to be honest with you. Mm. Well, Fred retired a few years after, and I think they had a new general manager, and I don't think it, it's... It's been... They had a, a number of them, actually. Did they? Yeah. Before... Um, John. Uh, John. John? No, yeah. There were at least two that I can think of. There was a man who was worked at WGN, and there was a woman who was in charge of the program, I think, for only a year. Hmm. Um, didn't, didn't Fred's son do that? Kirk? Yeah, do, didn't Kirk? Wasn't he, didn't he take over his dad's position there at one point? He was uh, the general manager out at uh, the DeKalb station. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. What was, it, what was the call letters? Not KDI. That was okay, KDI? No. KDI. Was that the Well, state? that was the student. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was KDI. The, that was the student run cable FM yeah, good. station. You, you, had you to can have, only get in the dorms. Right. And, yeah. You had to get it in the dorms. So after Dave and I, so I left, I graduated, I went to college and then Dave stayed another year and you were at WDCB down, uh, DuPage college, uh, college of DuPage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you joined me out after, uh, my freshman year in college at Deca uh, Northern Illinois university. And I had gotten a show, uh, a slot on WKDI because Kirk Moore was the general manager. But I got Sunday morning, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., <laughs> which is the worst time slot to get on college campus on a radio station that you could only listen through the dorm, through c cable, because everybody's passed out by that point. There's like no college student listening to radio at 6 a.m. on a Sunday. Forget it. And we tried to do a smorgasbord type show there, but I... Um, was starting to run into gen like the same th same thing that I did early in the WDGC days. Like I don't have the energy for this. Yeah, I didn't want to. I right, that's what you needed to uh, to pull that pull something like this off was enough inward push mm. to push back. And, oh. and I remember you came to you know, you, came you with me to on my push, first show. Push yourself forward and ignore the. Uh, criticisms but didn't have that in college and that, no. at that station it just wouldn't have worked it, it was, didn't work yeah it had I, to be music only i changed my major at that point because i went in there as a communications major and i thought well the radio is going to be my career and then i started to realize how it was going to be in the real world at that point and i'm i did two episodes two shows and i gave up i, I quit I was really sick the first episode. And I was, I remember drinking a lot of, uh, having a lot of NyQuil the night before just to, to get through the night. And then I got up at 5 a.m. to do the show. And it was just a disaster. And you were there with me on my first show. Yeah, I went, I remember. Uh, yeah, I went with you. Um, and I think we did two episodes. And then I just gave it up. I said, no, this isn't for me. And I changed my major to marketing. <laughs> Which I don't regret, but it just uh, it just it, it dwindled out. Uh, just two miscellaneous things here. Just they don't really fit anywhere in the previous. I found these bits. I thought these were kind of funny. There was a fire apparently in the in the uh, high school when we were doing our show, and somebody was trying to give us a warning to get out, and we uh, blew it off. Yeah, but hello. Hey, hello. This is the dude from the from the school. 
Uh, all the alarms are off, man. The fire alarms are off. You guys are going to have to get out. Really? That's serious, dude. This is a good bit. Okay, we'll put on a... Put on, a, put on an album or 30 something, 30-minute jam. Well, thanks a lot. This is good bye. material. Okay, bye. He wasn't joking. It really? sounded real to me. We're supposed to get out of here? I think so. No way. I don't smell smoke. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> we burned down your station's yelling up. Good I don't though, believe huh? it. Chris and Dave, leave Die. the show early. <laughs> Two weeks prematurely. Fire. Blaze. <laughs> so we played the final cut. This is the dude from the school. Yeah, that's dude. legit. <laughs> this yeah. is the dude. Yeah, this is the dude from the school. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. Hello. Hey, hello. This is the dude from the, from the school. <laughs> From the <laughs> school, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what credentials? Yeah. <laughs> we call this bluff. And we blew Finish it off. Finish out the show. We blew it off, yeah. Uh, you know, you have such a magical way with, with the things you do that it just sparks me. We have that makes, magical touch. Yeah, it just makes me want to pick up the phone and dial those seven magic numbers to get a new life. And I think everyone out there is listening. Do you mean 852 That's what he means, Dave. Is that what he means? Yeah. Is that what he means? Yeah. Is that what he means? Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, some it's, stuff it's I haven't heard times. in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Crazy. Okay. Just a question, Chris. Yes, Jerry. If you had, for some reason, said, no, I'll stick with the communications thing, go through, get your degree and everything, where do you think you would have ended up? Would you have ended up being talent or would you have ended up being in management? Probably a homeless. <laughs> well, before that. Well, that was actually the thing. I was thinking, all right, well, if I can't do on-air stuff, maybe I would do business, mm -hmm. on the business end of radio. Right. Um, okay. And I tried to get an internship with, um, I sent out my resume out to NBC, ABC, Chicago, just a couple of um, TV and slash radio stations. Got nothing. Got a couple of rejection letters. Mm -hmm. And then I reached out to Gary Meyer because my mom knew Steve and Gary, Steve Bell, mm -hmm. Gary Meyer. And yep. uh, I said, Gary, I thought Gary can get me in. He couldn't do anything for me either. It's like, oh man, this guy's on the inside. He couldn't get me anything for an internship. And I pretty much just gave it up Yeah, um, at that point. Well, considering the dumpster fire that uh, terrestrial radio or what they would call it, you, you know what I mean. The regular radio turn on, your, it's a dumpster fire. So you actually made the ultimate right decision. I guess so. In hindsight, yeah. yeah. Podcasting's worth that. Otherwise, I would have been moving from town to town. Up and down to down. <laughs> Dave, I mean, you, you kind of lived the, lived the dream for a while. <laughs> or the nightmare, depending... You're the only one no, out of I, all of us I, I that did. I had took some, it to a next level. I had uh, some nice experiences. Um, and it just kind of dried up. You know, I have no interest in uh, trying, trying to do that again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as a medium, it's just... I don't like what's happened to radio, so I don't even listen to the radio anymore. Well... I'm a podcast guy. Well, yeah, and, and I think it kind of makes sense because... I think that the digital mediums, the podcasts and, and this sort of thing, I think they're just a lot more accessible to, to you know, daily life of people. I, I mean, I would say, well, I could turn on the, the radio or whatever, but the thing is, it's the same. If you want something that's going to be anyway, um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Um fulfilling to you to listen to it's not going to be on regular radio i guess is what i'm trying to say yeah yeah i mean i, I would say music musically speaking um public radio still has much to offer but in terms of conversation and personality type things doesn't exist no not even on the uh i was talking talking about terrestrial but there's satellite radio i've listened to the satellite stuff and that's all pretty bad too so. That's sad. It's pretty much yeah, radio in a box. Yeah, which which just means a computer is just playing musical files over and over again, and then there's some sort of pre-recorded announcement mm -hmm. here yeah. and there. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the the human element has been pretty much almost totally, unless you're like a major star, which there are like hardly any radio stars left. I mean, you have Howard Stern, but that's about it. It's it's all just kind of set up in this pre, you know, when they were doing it was back in the 80s or whatever. Oh, I can't believe they have these automated stations. It's terrible. Well, that's it now. They won. That, that aspect of uh, radio is won. And... All to the detriment of the medium and you know, just society in general. Damn it! Well, that's a downer. Hey, 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 hey! I want to down, to leave the downer of a show. Hey, yeah. they expect me to bring it right down. Hey, yeah. Yeah. low level, but um, but well, anyway, it was, it was it was great legacy. I think that's one thing we can say is that the Chris and Dave Smorgasbord was a great legacy. Uh, for radio in general, I don't care if it's high school or prof- you know, quote unquote professional you know, mainstream radio. I think it was uh, something that both should be very proud of. Thank you. I am. It was fun kind of uh, looking back on this and pulling this all together and thinking back on sequentially and remembering some of these memories that I had kind of left behind. And of course the legacy, you know, 25 years later after signing off, uh, my daughter Allie and I relaunched this podcast, which, you know, 150 episodes later, I didn't think we would actually continue on this long, but I just can't kill it. It's just uh, something that's part of me, and I don't know how long I'll continue it, but it's uh, it's great to have the two of you still along for the ride. And certainly all the work that Allie and I did, I feel like we took this uh, program to another level because of all the technology that we've got today and the ability to do some of the recordings the way we didn't have the ability to do back then, taking it to a new level and trying to recreate some of the things we did before at the Get a Life and uh, some of the characters. And um, yeah, it's just been a fun ride. Um, what a long, strange trip it's been. It has been. So I don't really have anything else. Um, how, what do you think? Does that think I represented, I miss anything Did is there any memory that you have that I didn't uh, call out? Uh, where, and you mentioned going back to the bar now, was it on St. Pat's day when we had the snowstorm? Was that the same day that Andy Young's band played? Denied remarks, right? But wasn't Andy Young playing too? Andy, yeah, we had an opening band for us. Hmm. Denied remarks. So they they made it. They they played. They played, but they also had an audience of like six. Hmm. So they brought some of their own people. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. And then we had whoever we had. So they played a set, and they went into sympathy for the DJ. Well, sympathy for the devil and our. Uh, Pete and I got up there and we, we sang uh, sympathy for the DJ with them playing in the background. Okay. Um, that was an embarrassment. It was terrible. Um, we had another local TV station out there filming it all. And they were disappointed because they thought, I don't know how I got pe- paired up with them. But they were all in on it. They said, we're going to promote this. We're going to take the video and we're going to, you know, stream it. And I forgot what, what station it was. And they got out there and they realized there was nobody here. <laughs> they didn't know what they were, didn't, what they got themselves involved in. And, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. I was, I remember Andy, he was, he's a good musician. He, Andy Young. He, he was was good, he drummer? He, well, I, I, I heard him play guitar. Maybe he was a guitar player. He was quite good. as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some old barn footage. It's pretty bad quality now, but you can see them playing that, that opening set. Hmm. Yeah. So there you go. All right, guys. All righty. Thanks for coming out. This was fantastic. 40 years in the can. You guys have been, inst- Oh, I'm sorry. There's one last thing I have for you guys. What is it, Chris? I went out. I went out this morning. I got these for you. Okay, get his. Got, oh, so there I, you go. You guys there. can open them up. It's it's a card, and they're the same card, but they have different um, they have different writings inside. You can keep this in your uh, memorabilia. <laughs> Good sound effects. Good radio. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we got it. Dave, can you, can you help Dave out there? He's having, he's struggling opening up the envelope. <laughs> oh, Sounds like a bunch of locusts. Oh God, it's like <laughs> wrestling. Gosh. Somebody want to read the uh, main the main body of the card because they're the same card. Well, Dave's always had the J voice. I think he should do it. <laughs> Forty. <laughs> this isn't any ordinary anniversary, Hart. It's our fortieth, and that's pretty extraordinary. It's a poetic. Yes, it is. Said Boy, with you're... said with feeling, and I meant it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, do you want to read the inside part here? As well, or is the inside kind of like personal? Like, yeah. Well, no, I'm talking about the meet. printed, the printed part, not yeah, the, the printed part, part of the card. You can read that first. If we and lose then you touch, can... if we lose touch, let's meet at Andy's at Eleven East Hubbard in <laughs> 25 years. I think you wrote that in my yearbook. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I missed you. I'm sorry I didn't show up that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, because today is a celebration of who we are as friends and the life we've created together and all the things that make our friendship so special heart Happy, yeah heart you know how Definitely. difficult it was to find a hallmark hallmark card that actually said those words yeah well you kind of i had to kind of butcher it because it was it, it was a 40th it. anniversary card it, it was like our anniversary our 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 right I changed it a little bit yeah i appreciate <laughs> that anyway happy anniversary and happiness always <laughs> wow thanks chris you can, you can read the sentiment in there. Beautiful. Well, I guess you can go first. I guess you can go first. All I brought you was some popcorn. <laughs> some skinny pop. That's okay. All right. Uh, That'll be great for my uh, diverticulosis. I'm so fortunate that you found me on the air and that you uh, introduced yourself to me. You... It's the light in here. It's not. It's not your handwriting. It's just that it's a little bit uh, dark. Here, you risked it all. I think. That's what you, yeah, you risked it all by teaming up with me. Wow. Nah, that was no risk. <laughs> that was just what had to be. Uh, to become the Chris and Dave DVD duo. Duo. <laughs> right. Because I was going to say, if there was a Chris and Dave DVD, I didn't get no money off of that. We were pre-DVD. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Um, <laughs> didn't get the DVD. It would have been the Chris and Dave VHS at the time. <laughs> yeah. Our show was... De- uh, I am sorry. I'm having... I am so sorry. My writing sucks. <laughs> I'm 56. I can't even hold a pen anymore. I just want my royalties for that DVD. That's all I know. Uh, would you like no, me to read it to you, no. Dave? Yeah, would you? It'll mean so much more. I hope I could read coming, my own writing. I said, I am you. so fortunate that you found me on the air and that you introduced yourself to me. You risked it all by teaming up with me to become the Chris and Dave duo. Our show has deep roots in my life and the influence you had on me is immeasurable. Our on-air chemistry is alive and well even today. Thank you for all the great memories, brother. Thanks, man. That's beautiful. Hey, bro. Thank you. Uh, do you need help, Jerry, or do you need no, me to read I can, I can read mine. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for all the great years and memories. You are a great friend and even better human being. <laughs> you are a better human being too. I, I second that. Okay, second that the motion. Oh, uh, motion. Yeah. Um. Who knew when we were digging at each other on the air way back then that would be the start of an incredible friendship that would be celebrated forty years later. Happy friend anniversary. Friend anniversary. <laughs> friend anniversary, bud. Chris. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> well, I'm going to put this right back in the envelope. <laughs> okay. Same here. <laughs> and that is the end of the Smorgasbord Radio Show, episode 151. This is the 40th anniversary of the Smorg Show podcast of Chris and Dave Smorgasbord. I hope you enjoyed this. 
retrospective look at the history of the show. I kind of feel like I've lived it all over again. Thanks, Chris, for doing all the work and putting this together. It, it's really. true. The, this was a lot of work. Yeah. Nice, nice job on this. Thank so. you. Yeah, I, th- I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for both being here. Yeah. You're, you're incredible good friends of mine. And uh, yeah, thank you for the life together. And that basically means we have to get back to work and come up with some new material for the next season. This will be season 41 coming up this fall. <laughs> the best thing about looking back and saying thanks for the memories is we need new material. <laughs> so let's yeah, go with new stuff. Let's do that. New stuff. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Woo. Well, that's it. Smoke Show Podcast. Have a good night. Bye.